Um, so, let's see. I guess the question is, uh, what now? What now? So, we're going to need a recap, and there's going to be a Faxpiration question on offer. Um, uh, Lex, I did look the, at the calendar. Um, I canceled the stream, the prep stream for next Saturday, but we still have a game next Saturday. It's the Saturday after that that we don't have a game. Um... Right? We, we, I mean, let me look at... Let me look at the announcements thing. I was specifically talking about uh, Sunday because you know some people consider that the beginning of the week or whatnot. But um, wait, so Sunday what? The, the Sunday second? the second, I believe. Yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. It says it says we. Oh 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 oh. You're asking for a different game. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We're playing Red Hand Doom on that day, and um, I was assuming I'd still run my games on that Sunday also. I okay. don't want to cancel. I don't want to cancel two weeks in a row. I'm canceling the weekend after that for uh, for my vacation. Gotcha. Okay, so yeah. that'd be the ninth. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My my vacation from D and D starts Monday the third. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Gosh, um, that sounds nice. <laughs> <laughs> that would for be me. Nice. For me, it does sound nice. Actually, it does sound nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll get uh, back. I'll get back to you with the other stuff. Okay. Fair enough. Um. All right. So today's factspiration question is, uh, so we got to roll a one D 300. Here we go. A nine. Okay. Uh, let's see. Would you rather speak 10 languages or play 10 instruments? Jesus Christ. That's like the easiest question. All right, whatever. There's 300 questions. They can't all be doozies. Can't all be doozies. All right. So the question, the question is: Would your character rather speak ten languages or play ten different instruments? Um, go ahead and ruminate on that, that mind crusher. And um, if somebody would like to give me a recap of what happened uh, last time for a point of demon inspiration, it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, if you're interested, go ahead and throw a D twenty into chat. Oh man, Barnabas, getting them bad rolls out of the way right away. Will he? But does my halfling luck apply? <laughs> uh, to this, I would say no. This is this fair, is a fair. real world luck. This is real world luck. Um, but I think you're gonna win anyways, because everyone else is sleepy. Uh, all right, go I'll once, take it go by twice. Fault. Barnabas winning with a natural one. Ah, that's a good start to the day. All mm -hmm. right. Let's get started. Last time on the Red Hand of Doom remix, we opened to the lair of the Ghost Lord, Kalari Rawls, the fungal druidic lich. Having come here to confront the ancient dryad Bloodlord Ulwai and cease the production of the Red Hand Bone Drinkers, the undead super soldiers being created from hobgoblins for the upcoming final battle. I had my own reasons for wanting to come here. There was a score to be settled with Olai as she is responsible for wrongfully imprisoning my patron, Mela the Crafty, in the genie vessel that I carry around. And uh, she had sought to bind Mela to the Red Hand to create their weapons, but however fate led us uh, to for me and Mela to come together and then cross the land from Denevar to find Olai and exact wrathful vengeance upon her. Mm -hmm. So, we opened last session to opening the door to the study of the Ghost Lord, and we came face to face with him, and he warned us that Olwe was about to take control of him. Radriar stepped in and cast a protective spell to ward off her charms, and by God, it worked. Like, we got him on our side, he was able to maintain his faculties, and we set up to ambush Olwe. And uh, he tucked some of us into a shrine behind his study and made a deceptive performance so that Olai would feel comfortable enough to come into battle and not run away. While we were in the shrine, there was a twisted dark tree that reached out to Layla's mind, and at first she ignored it, uh, but it kind of stayed there and kind of crept into her mind through the battle. Uh, Bloodlord Olai arrived and entered combat with several hobgoblins at her side, and Jert tried to wrap her up in a cold iron chain to pull her into the room and keep her still while we uh, sorted out how to kill her. Uh, early on in the battle, she was able to blind Rafina and charm Thanlin to her side. Now, fortunately, Thanlin had been suffering from the Bone Drinkers, and he didn't pose as much of a threat as he normally would with a majorly reduced strength. Uh, but uh, I was able to resist Olwai's temptuous magics, thanks to my patron Mellor reminding me why she is the number one waifu. Uh, then, uh, so we kind of 
carried on into the battle, Jert, who had been grappling her, got the ire of her assistance and was taken down pretty quickly. And then, unfortunately, a massive damage crit killed him. And then, in quick succession, she tore off his head and ripped out his spine, just taking away any hopes we had of revivifying him in combat. We struggled to keep damage on her, as one of her abilities allowed her to heal every time she dealt damage to us, and this was made all the more difficult by those crits that she was dealing, and the fact that Rafina was blind and unable to chill touch her. And for a moment, we, we kind of thought we were heading towards a TPK, but uh, it kind of all shifted at a moment in which the tree that had been talking to Layla offered her a boon, and Layla accepted, get, gaining immense power of fortitude, gaining health and regenerative properties, and we were all able to rush to her aid to uh, gang up on Olwai. We'd taken out her troops. Of course, not before Thanlin tried to assist her. And uh, me and Thanlin got into a David versus Goliath style PvP combat, which was a lot of fun. And uh, I'm not going to say which one of us is a better marshal, but he did more damage to him than he did to me and maybe passed mm -hmm. more saves. Mm -hmm. uh, and then fortunately, Rafina was able to land, uh, clear her blindness, land a chill touch, we piled on to Olwai, dealt a bunch of damage to her, and then finally were able to rend her unconscious using non-lethal damage and get the cold iron shackles that I had made to bind her to this plane so that we could kill her and make her death permanent. With the battle over, we sought the guidance of the Ghost Lord, who expected us to betray him, but uh, we have actually managed to do pretty well in our negotiations with Star Singer Solaria. Rager is the only person bound to kill him, and only after we defeat the Red Hand will he be due of this uh, promise. So we are we made some promises to him, made alliances to uh, made assurances that he would stay in the Thorn Waste, that he would sequester himself to his shrine uh, where he will not be scryed upon, um, and that he will remain neutral in the war. Uh, we he less spend the night there. We gathered ourselves. We repaired our dear friend Jert, repaired his body for the potential of bringing him back. And then we made the three-day journey to the Dwarven settlement of Karaz Fromgo, or, or the Mushroom Mountain, where we sought out a priest to bring back Jert. And that's basically where we left off. We kind of talked about gang there we acknowledge that we could bring back jerk but we're there's a little bit of timey wimey stuff that's going to fall into place as we kind of elaborate on the journey fair enough all right go ahead and take your uh dm inspiration okay and for a fact inspiration does anybody want to answer this uh question would you rather speak 10 languages or play 10 instruments i i am going to add in and why at the end just to just to make you sweat a little bit uh, if you're interested in answering this question go ahead and roll out a, a d20 mm -hmm. all right thanlin of the 15 going once going twice oh that can die has entered the arena all right, starting again, going once, going twice. And sold to Thanlin of Drellin's Ferry. What's going on? You would choose 10 languages because the oh. language barrier, that's been a problem all game long, has mm -hmm. been a serious issue. Fair, fair. Okay. Um, you may ask the same question of any NPC you've met previously on your journey. Uh... He's probably relevant to this, but Umeg? Umeg. Hmm. He wants to know if he could trade those in musical instruments for um, for crafting tools. Uh, would you Would you allow it? Or do they have to be musical instruments? Yeah, sure. Crafting tools. All right. Well, if they could be artisan tools, then he would definitely choose that over languages because he really doesn't care what the other races have to say. Um, and it's none of his business. And having all those without having to take a level of crafter, uh, craftsman, or artificer, mm, sweet money. That's the good stuff. If it was musical instruments, eh, 
eh, do you really need to know how to play more than one musical instrument? Honestly, um, seems kind of selfish to have more than one. He would probably take the languages just because it would be uh, more practical and more useful. So, that's that. Alrighty, let us jump into some um, right handed doom. Yeah. All right, let's see. I have some good music for this because we're going to sum up traveling. All right. Uh, Is that fan spell in the chat? Was that recent? <laughs> Um, I think it was yes, Discord chat. Yes. I think you guys would have that one, yeah. Okay. Why would I add it 30 seconds ago? Did I add that? Oh, no, 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 no. This building off of... That's fax spell. Yeah, okay. So which one are you asking about? Fan spell. I think that is relatively recent. Yeah. Okay, so I'll lock the thing. All right. And... All right, so Barnabas wouldn't have his anymore. All right, changing out music. <laughs> All right, so you guys traveled using campfire and according to my notes, you had a perfect trip. You did amazing. Um, I hope these are the right notes. Um, I guess it's a bank error in your guys' favor. Um, so go ahead and give me... I need to see three D20s. So whatever the three D20s are that I see... That's what I... Oh my goodness, big money. Alright, alright. Uh, Thanlin, since you can't get crits... Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, alright, let's I'll see. <laughs> I, roll, I roll my ghost dice. Aw, I mean, ghosts could roll for this, but... You, you know, you were there. You were there in spirit. Hey. Okay. Too early. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Um. <laughs> oh wow, this is actually about you. Uh, number twenty. Uh, your soul sings <laughs> from the sights on the journey. Uh, or perhaps you overcame a tough obstacle and feel invigorated by it. I would say probably not the second one. Um, the party may replace. Oh my God. Oh my god, the party may replace one future result of a d20 roll with a 20. Hell Whoa. yeah. This Does boon that have a duration? This Sorry. boon lasts until you leave this location. So, until you do okay. until you do traveling again, essentially. Holy shit. <laughs> so nice. we're just going to live here now, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. All right, I will paste that into chat. I don't, man. Okay. Oh man, what was that party of dwarves in the in the Lord of the Rings uh, prequels? Who? Uh, uh, I'm just thinking out loud now. You're uh, saying okay. we're gonna play dwarves and leave here so our characters can keep that? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> an all an all dwarf party is a good party. Let me tell you, that's a that's a good time right there. Like these guys can they can leave and go be heroes in Brindle. Like the dwarves can stay and all party right. here. So what I'll do is I put it into our Discord, but I'll also put it here and I'll pin it, depending on how long we stay here. But that way we have a good recollection of it. And I'll pin it in Discord as well. Um, this is a shared boon, though. So you all got to keep an eye on Thanlin. You know what I'm saying? Gotta keep an eye on Thanlin. It's a shared boon. All right. Um, 12. Perhaps it was a hearty breakfast or a magically infused patch of flowers but whatever the case, the party feels ready. And you know, I'm supposed to encourage storytelling with this uh, with the system. So before we read the next one, can anyone tell me what you saw on your journey? What what incredible sight or what tough obstacle did you guys overcome as a team to make you feel so brokenly optimistic? Well, we did see the supernatural weather effect of the cloud dragons. Ooh, okay. Yeah. All right, bringing it all together. All right, all right. Well done, well done. Okay. 12, perhaps it was a hearty breakfast or a magically infused batch of flowers, but whatever the case, the party feels ready to face the world. Um, each party member could roll a hit die without expending its use. 
you then get that many temp HP upon arriving in your location. Would be more useful if you were arriving somewhere dangerous. But this is a very safe place, so... Of course, right. Uh, Man, yeah, why yeah. can't we have unlocked this before we went to the Thorn Waste? <laughs> Uh, because I deliberately put it behind level 9, because by the time you get to level 9, mo most random encounters are just, uh, you know, burning, burning our game clock, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, alright, and then we've got... You could... Alright, yeah, somebody tell me, what, what happened? It doesn't necessarily have to be, um, you know, magic flowers or whatever, but what made you guys feel so invigorated, uh, when you arrived here? What, what made you feel so confident? What about the journey, uh, brought that out in you guys? It can, you can make up any shit you want, but it can't provide any mechanical benefits at all outside of the temp HP. But if you want to make up some bullshit like you were attacked by an ancient red dragon, somehow routed it on the road, uh, it flew off, and you guys all felt like champions. I mean, it didn't. that doesn't change anything mechanically, so if that's the story, I guess that's what happened. So does anybody want to jump in? Tell me what happened to, while you were traveling for this to occur? Anybody? Storytelling? Um, I know we say we don't get combat encounters, uh, but maybe we come across a scouting party of Red Hand and we just route them so badly that, uh, oh, nice. that we you actually just feel whoop, good about yeah. ourselves. You just whoop yeah. their asses. I, I honestly, mechanically, mathematically, yes. Yeah, if you happened upon like some uh, some war riders, um, yeah, you would, they, they wouldn't have a chance. They wouldn't have a fucking chance. They yeah, would one be, of those. They, yeah. We get one of those anime cutscenes where we like display all of our new level nine powers and just destroy them. Beautiful. All right. Uh, the last Benny is a number ten. Sharp as attack, your mind races with possibilities of danger and how to avoid them. The party member with the highest intelligence score gains a boon hey, that ooh. allows that allows them to have the damage of one attack or spell that hits them, and this boon last until they use it oh my goodness nice. all right i'll make a convenient effect for that one i guess oh yeah that's coming to the final battle with me <laughs> oh pe people say that but then desperate times but let's see i will be very impressed i'll be very impressed all right they'll call sure he'll be fine <laughs> there you oh you've learned you've learned all right so we'll call it sharp as attack and uh let's see yeah, this is the best traveling method ever. <laughs> well, the bad ones you could imagine are pretty bad. Okay. So, yeah. Fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but generally, yeah, if you've got a if you've got a good party with good uh, spread of skills and things like that, or a ranger, um, yeah, it's a, it's a great system. Oh, Lord, boy. All right. So I will add sharpest attack to. Is there anyone that's going to contest whether or not Barnabas is the smartest person in the party? It looks at you all through narrowed eyes. Okay. I mean, I guess it depends on your definition of smart. There we go. I was waiting for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we're going for um, standardized test score, S SAT's uh, intelligence. Yeah. Oh, it does not make you mean right. he makes good choices. <laughs> yeah, that would be wisdom, right? It's making good yes. choices. Yes. All right. So um, what happened on your journey to um, make your mind race with possibilities, Barnabas? Well, I think that that uh, comes day two. Uh, he was having a really good day, day two, because that was the day he rolled the nat 20 cartography check. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, that was obviously also the day, since he had burned his ring use the day before. He goes into the ring, he gets to, like, tell his patron excitedly about how he vanquished Olwai, give her the, the big eyes that say, Senpai, I require head pats. And uh, she gives him the access to his new feat, which is uh, Gun Mage Adept, which he's very excited about. So he's mm -hmm. pretty much riding on Cloud Nine through this whole journey. Beautiful. All right. So with our travel stuff sorted, um, you guys would have arrived um, in Kern Dural, and you would have sought out the temple. Uh, you would have offered twice the going rate of uh, a raised dead, and they would start to bring him to the back of the of the church. They asked if anybody uh, was family, and then you guys did a uh, too fast, too furious, and you all were family, and then you you're back there watching this happen. Is that where we're at? Are we caught up? Was there anything that we needed to cover before that? Um, I had a couple things to cover. Sure. All right. What do you got? Um, we had me doing a meditative rest before we left with 
the tree to see if it mm. kind of left any dreams with me. And as well, on our travel, um, as it's kind of a multi-day thing, I probably would legend ward during a campfire about the mother to see what I've tied myself into. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Um, so first of all, um, when you are meditating, uh, you understand uh, and learn a ritual. Um, the ritual uh, takes one minute to perform, but if you perform it on a recently defeated enemy, um, that is not an uh, essentially not a construct. Uh, it is it is good for you if you earn enough favor performing these rituals uh you will gain additional powers and abilities so the ritual would be the ritual of fungal death which i mean they really could have workshopped it a bit more um but yeah so it's one minute and you perform it on a uh a corpse of a defeated enemy that is not a construct essentially all right now as you travel um and attempt to use legend lore you are not getting the results you want which leads you to believe that the mother is not her real name or its real name So you would get some knowledge about uh, the context of it working with the Ghost Lord, though. Mm -hmm. So hold on just a sec. Yeah, I mean, she had assumptions. It wasn't his real name. I wasn't sure, you know, like thinking about the tree and, and if everything, if that would like tie it together or not. But... It right. at least gives her some kind of context of like, okay, it's going to be a journey to figure this one out. Yeah, so uh, what you understand uh, with your legend lore of the creature is that it is very much a legendary creature. Uh, let me bring up legend lore to make sure I'm giving you generally the right, uh, the right stuff here. Yeah. Um, name or describe... All right, so you don't really need the name. You can kind of describe it. Still brings to your mind a brief summary of significant uh, lore. All right, here's what you kind of learn as your mind sort of drifts through the story. This is an ageless being, possibly in the category of a great old one uh, or maybe an ancient primordial. They have existed and continue to exist in many worlds. Uh, at once they are drawn to and empowered by the dark places of the world such as the underdark and the fey dark they have an affinity for and a love of plants particularly fungal plants and organisms that are similar in nature such as oozes slimes jellies The goal of this creature is the propagation of those species uh, because the existence of those species and the spread of those species um, empowers the, the being and uh, allows them to grow their influence uh, across the multiverse. They are by the definition of the standard humanoid races of Elsa Vale, an evil being. And dangerous. So that's sort of your takeaway. Mm. All right. Any other questions uh, that uh, or events that would have happened during the travel? I've got one. Okay. I, uh, I had like nine crafting checks over three days, and most of them were just <laughs> used to make uh, stuff for NPCs. So right, specifically right, right. what I wanted to do was talk to my assistants who have been so 
faithful and good through this whole journey that yeah, they yeah. never asked for. Talks to Jocelyn, he, you know, thanks her, but also this mostly an apology. Like, he apologizes for leading her to believe that she would ex get to experience life as an adventurer, yet, like, throwing her into a world where she had to quickly become a soldier. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was her father that, like, wanted her to leave. And, you know, when he entered Moreland's Smith, Smithy for the first time, he recognized that Jocelyn was, without a doubt, the most magnificent thing there that he had created, the thing with the most potential, and he could have never imagined the scale of events that would transpire, but, you know, he knew they had to take her from Joel and Surrey to protect her. And, you know, we he had tried to convince his allies to re-enter Jones Ferry to save Moreland, but, you know, our courage did not muster and we focused on our primary goal. And he ha he gives her his word that this conflict does not end for him until he reunites her with Moreland. And, uh, you know, if she wants to continue to actually be an adventurer after this, he would show her the veil and the lands beyond. And he definitely also owes Gina an apology. Basically the same thing, but more to the extent that he convinced her to join under the context that he would help her build business connections and pursue, like, build the crafting art of guns. Mm -hmm. And over the course of two days, he helps her build a firearm similar to his own. But instead of being a sighted rifle and a shotgun, it's a sighted rifle and a fully automatic submachine gun. Now, it's, you know, like, not a weapon that she actually uses, um, and automatic weapons in Valders are pretty bad, but it's more for the flavor of the effect, and it's pretty much being the Veil's first. Um, and, yeah, that's that's the whole thing. He, he just feels like he owes, his, uh, he promises her, continues to help her with these business connections as we go into the Dwarven Holds, and that he'll get her back to Denivar. Mm. All right. Um, it is well received uh, by both NPCs, and uh, Jocelyn informs you that um, at this point, she wouldn't have it any other way. If her option was to flee from her home and, uh, you know, take refuge uh, to the east while everything burned and everything was taken, or... Uh, travel with you and and support those who can fight she she would have chosen this path uh, every every time um, as far as what comes after she's afraid to think about um, what comes after she wants to stay focused on the here and the now and what needs to be done I also make her a master uh, hand axe similar to Thanlin's to mix with her warhammer Ooh, nice all right um Gina uh, informs you that while she hasn't had an opportunity to set up the business uh, arrangements and uh, trade trade connections that she was hoping for, she has learned a great deal uh, under your mentorship, under your, your tutelage. Um, and since you did not have her sign like a non-competitive, uh, not you know, non-disclosure agreement, um, you know, that in and of itself is quite valuable because she's going to take, you know, a lot of the schematics and stuff that she's learned from you and, uh, you know, kind of run with it. Yeah, he's aware yeah, yeah. of that and encouraged Yeah, it. yeah. Oh, and wow. I mean, right. a big part of it actually is like he knows Gina. He knew who she was when mm -hmm. he invited her and he knows her family. And like Barnabas wanted to be a gunsmith when he was a young man. And he propositioned her father many times to take on as a employee to uh, mass produce his schematics. But, you know, the guy mocked him, said he was a halfling, that he wouldn't live long enough to make anything of purpose, these sort mm -hmm. of things. Yeah, yeah. And he, he definitely roped Gina into this basically to make sure that if he died, that there would be someone with the wherewithal to bring his schematics back to Denivar and be able to say that he did this. Well done. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, was there anyone else that had anything that happened during the travel that they need to, uh, or want to, uh, discuss before we fast forward to the scene of this hopefully successful revival? Uh, this wouldn't have been during travel, but back at the Ghost Lord's, uh, sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Um, Rafina, uh, essentially, uh, inquiring if there's any knowledge that he would be able to teach to her about the Circle of Spores, as well as what they are able to do with this new fungal mushroom baby that she has. Okay, okay. 
Um, he uh, he points out uh, to you uh, several techniques, and in doing so, um, you are now able to burn wild surge charges uh, to uh, rebuke a plant. So, like, uh, turn or rebuke undead, but turn or rebuke plants. Um, activating such an ability would then use a wild surge. A wild surge or a wild shape? Sorry, wild, sorry, wild shape. It was a wild okay. shape. A wild shape charge. Uh, you do get the feeling that if you were opposed to him, you would... Uh, and you were trying to churn his stuff against him or, or make it flee, uh, it would either not work or those creatures would probably be um, rolling with advantage to kind of maintain under his control sort of thing. Um, since, like, the techniques are from him sort of sort of deal. Uh -huh. um, regarding a Baby Mushroom, uh, he explains to you uh, that such creatures take a long time to grow, um, but if cared for... Uh, can make stalwart uh, defenders. Okay. Uh, and that they are sweet, sweet little doughboys, soft little sweet doughboys. Um, but when tasked with defending something, um, that is where all of the aggression and anger and malice that they normally never feel. Uh, that kind of gets compartmentalized away into a, a little little box in the attic. Uh, gets opened up, and they uh, they become fierce uh, combatants. I think Rapian is quite uh, aware of that, it's having mm. a couple outside of a uh, Warco Mouse yep. hideout. And until they're fully grown, they do not have the ability to um, essentially re reproduce. Um, but once they reach that full size, um, they uh, they can kind of spore off uh, smaller bits. Those smaller bits have a very low survival rate, like like lower than sea turtle survival rate, because they are very tasty, and so they are they are often eaten up by um, other predators before they get a chance to to grow. Uh, yours is no different. Uh, if you are ever desperate for food or just want a delicious snack, um, I mean he's there. Uh, I don't think, uh, hmm. I mean, I don't know, you know, her, uh, proclivities and all that stuff. Right, right, right. I, I get the feeling she wouldn't do that. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, for now, it is, um, it is likely to be more of a liability in combat than anything else. Um, but it's certainly a, a cute, like, companion animal. Uh, a, a wow vanity pet, uh, such as it were. Mm. Mm. Yeah, she's mostly just going to keep them safe. Okay. Um, and then, actually, during travel, Rafina would be um, watching and observing Layla. Uh, seeing if there's any changes in their actions, behaviors, um occasionally asking how they currently feel um just checking in on them um but it's also like probably looking into a mirror because both of our insights and perceptions are super high layla would understand that uh this is more of an observation of trying to see what has happened to you mm. like i know okay. that you know that i know <laughs> and etc cetera, etc cetera. well yeah and i don't think either of you has a very good deception so um Layla, you would know that uh, she is studying you a great deal. Um, what would Layla have any out outward tells, um, behavior-wise, uh, over the next few days to show that things have changed? Like, would your legend lore change the way you sort of carry yourself and the and the way that you interact with everyone? Um, observing from the distance, for you know. If you're not going up to converse with her, um, you would at least notice closer to the start of the journey. Um, and by that, I mean like the start of this whole campaign. She's more withdrawn again, a little more like careful and 
not really distant. She's not, you know, like sitting off to the side or anything, but she's lost in her own thoughts a lot. Um, holding the kind of half rotted, blighted looking uh, wooden arm with her still good arm a lot, kind of tapping on it. Um, she's not very keen on, on talking, but she, she does her tasks. And she seems like she's just really trying to keep her mind busy more than anything. So it sounds like the guarded walls that Layla had originally have come back up. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Noted. Okay. Um, you could give me, as part of your observations, a blind medicine check. Uh... Whoops, that's blocking. Medicine. Okay. Oh, it came uh, No, no worries. Um, everything seems fine. Okay. All right. Any other events that happened during the travel and or level up um, before reaching uh, the Dwarven settlement of uh, Kern Dural? Uh, Balin would have approached Layla on the first night of camp. Okay. After the Ghost Lord incident. He would have right. sat down in front of her, away from everybody else, and, um, showed concern and asked, how is she mentally after what had transpired? Because he was out of it most of the fight, so he wasn't aware of what had happened until after. I don't know. That's that's my answer. I don't know. I don't know what the future holds. I don't know what any of this means. I don't. I. I know I don't want to become. The ghost lord. I know that. But I assume at some point I'm probably going to have to pay off a debt for my life being saved. For letting my hesitation and my anger get the better of me. Is there a way we can break the bond? Something to do to disconnect you from whatever this power is. Lord, if I know. But it's useful and It's the first time we've actually managed a real victory against a blood lord. So, Major R and I said we'd give our lives for this. I guess mine was a little bit of an ironic twist to that statement. But, as much as I hate to say it, I'm probably going to need this. We have three escaped blood lords, plus what, two more we haven't encountered? And I'm sure they've been keeping busy, gathering their own strength. The last thing any of you need is me collapsing into death on the battlefield. I... I have to be there to pick all of you up, right? We can do the same for you.
it might hurt Dan a little bit, but if, if he's got good insight, he can see, like, a little bit of doubt at that <laughs> statement. Uh, I don't yeah. think he has a very particularly high, <laughs> yeah. He's got an average, an average commoner, uh... Yeah, you know, a little okay. bit better than the average commoner for well, she, 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 she just pats him on the shoulder. That's it's what he knows. Good. That's how he manages to keep tanking for the party. This is uh his pretty pretty low uh, insight, I think. So uh an important survival skill. Alright. Um any other scenes that might have played out during the during the travel? Uh, just as a quick one, uh, Barnes uh -huh. would observe like Layla's slow wall building process. Someone who has his own walls, um, mm -hmm. and he would just he, he, not that he would try to do like a big thing with her, but kind of try to get into her comfort zone. He would ask her about like he wants to map the stars, and he might just ask her some for some star advice to try to help remind her where she came from. But mm -hmm. also because he has ulterior motives in everything he does, and he's doing something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh. Lila, would you would you engage in that activity or no? It's something to keep her mind busy and something she can do on her own. So yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, Sasha, who is a big Layla stan, uh, appreciates the effort that everyone is doing. Uh, she herself, coming from a from a city city thief uh, kind of background, um, is used to people um, kind of coming into li your life, leaving your life, um, trauma, drama, um, betrayals, uh, changes, things like that. Um, but the the situation that you guys were in with the Thorn Waste and the Ghost Sword has, is a lot for her. And whatever has happened to Layla seems to be uh, far outside of her ability to totally comprehend. Uh, and so Layla, she's just sort of quiet and present um and trying to be helpful to you but does not seem to have any any real words of encouragement or any idea um how to help you uh because it just feels like you just keep experiencing like loss and and sacrifice uh with from what she can see very little gain um and so her heart breaks for you but she doesn't know she doesn't really know what to do Okay. Um, I guess during the journey, Raijin would ask uh, just a couple of times um, if you guys were springing for the kind of raise uh, the kind of resurrection that gives them a new body. Because if you were going to do that, maybe it'd be okay if we ate Jerk Bandon. <laughs> I don't know how that goes. I don't know how that goes over with everybody. I thought we fit this neck. Well, no, we need yeah, a yeah. for this. But he points out, because, you know, him barred and have training, um, he points out that, like, you know, there's some raised dead rituals, like, you know, resurrection, that, you know, he, he would have a new body, and, you know, we don't, we don't need all of this one, you know, kind of, kind of thing. That one is much more expensive, and we don't have that kind of funds, or necessarily even, I think that's much higher magic, right? I don't, I don't okay. really know raised dead spells that well. All right. Well, then he does. Um, he does when you kind of shoot down his request. He does tell you that if he dies during this crusade, he wants you to eat his body, eat of his flesh, grow fat uh, on his fat, that he might continue the journey inside each of you. Mm, I will honor phrasing, this request. Rajar. Er. Rising, phrasing. <laughs> what the fuck? Is that? <laughs> Sorry, wrong name. They're so similar. Here. Wrong lizard. <laughs> All right. So oh, what the yeah. fuck does that mean? <laughs> oh, we, we distant relatives. Like you, you don't want to. I mean, this You'll is see the family it, resemblance. This no, no. This is just his cultural. This is his cultural value. That's all. He's just throwing his cultural value out there. Time. We get all many right. meals out of him rude but true um all right so anything else happened during the journey before we fast forward to the uh to the back room of the temple man there was an offer to uh, from the ghost lord to have zombies but i think ray will refuse <laughs> it okay <laughs> walking, fair enough walking through the lands like michonne yeah oh. yeah that would be awkward um in el surveil people aren't aren't really keen on undead so Okay. Speaking of 
Undead. I'm I want to play D and D, so I'm gonna make this quick. Okay. I'm looking. I'm looking for a name or just anything from the Ghost Lord. I talked about wanting to ask a patron. I would just probably forgo that. Um, and he wants to know who documented his tomb and who stole from it, because he had to have found out about his tomb from some kind of book or journal, or mm -hmm. some kind of story. And if he can know who logged that, he can go get his ship back. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the Ghost Lord does not know who got to your tomb first, and he points out that such is the such is the unfortunate reality of being uh, an undead who does slumber is mercenaries, adventurers, so-called heroes um, will frequently uh, plumb the depths of the old places in the world uh, seeking their treasures. Um, however, when he heard whispers in the dark of this, uh, coming evil, uh, this returning, um, force that is the Red Hand, um, he, on his own, uh, began to make, uh, small preparations, sort of, um, researching things that might be useful, things that might help against uh the red hand and in doing so uh he learned of your kingdom's involvement and uh, their loss their sacrifice and the legend of them stealing away uh, a great warrior a great hunter who would uh once one day rise again to continue the hunt against uh these blood worshiping uh fey and so he made it a uh he made it a particular you know, so, uh, task or, or, or goal to ensure that you were found and released into the world. He himself did not make the journey. He actually has a uh, a, a mummy uh, ally who dwells in the southern, southern kingdoms. And uh, through a network of uh, powerful spellcasters owing each other favors, uh, called in a favor to go and have your... Uh, essentially your sarcophagus your your um your tomb the the place where your body was actually stored um opened and released uh, apparently um the agents who did this were killed uh, by whatever uh defensive uh measures had been placed on your tomb by uh by your people but you yourself were able to awaken but as to the fate of your belongings um unknown you thank you for the information mm. and go about his way. Okay. All right. So, I think that is enough of that. We're going to go to the back room of the temple. All right. All right. Okay. The dwarves begin to light the incense and begin the uh, very expensive ritual of uh, bringing back the soul of Jert Bandon. Uh, Jert, what sort of religious uh, beliefs does Jert Bandon carry, if any? Um, he was raised to uh, kind of believe in the, uh, the Dawn Lord of this mm -hmm. region when he was a young kid. But when he got lost in the Feywild, he lost a lot of connection to that. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. He more he respects more like the power of fate and uh, magic itself rather than any deity. Then more than likely in the time since you have passed, um, you you would essentially wake naked in a great and ancient forest. Um, it would not have the same vibe that the Feywild had. It would feel a bit more primal, a bit more primordial, and it would feel uh both dangerous but also exhilarating and in that realm you would feel your humanity such as it were um ever so slowly begin to uh to leave you as there is no need for it here uh for this is this is a realm of hunting and uh being hunted this is a realm of pure instinct uh, this is the place where those who spent their lives in the hunt continue uh, the hunt for eternity. 
but as you are sort of um, out on the hunt uh, and sort of um, adapting to or embracing this new way of life, um, you feel the pull, the call of your previous life. And as quickly as those memories began to fade, they come rushing back in, uh, perched uh, in a uh, the nook of a tree, um, hunting some great, majestic, uh, otherworldly stag, you remember. You remember who you were, what was happening, the faces uh, still burned into your mind of your mother and your father before you wandered off and disappeared. Uh, the face of your childhood friend who you went after. The face of the monster that she became. Uh, the laugh of Guy, the bard, and the terrible rending sound of his life being ended. The allies that you've made, the enemies, the friends, the foes, it all comes rushing back to you. And you do have the option to leave all that behind, to move on to what is next, or allow yourself to be brought back to resume that hunt, that journey, and delay this inevitable next experience till another day. To another day. The job's not done. Okay. And with those muttered words, um, your body uh, just sort of fades into small sort of motes of lights and puffs of pollen and uh, gentle wind blowing leaves through the, the trees of this ancient forest. And that same sort of wind fills the lungs of Dirt Bandon. And you guys watch as his Frankenstein-esque uh, corpse uh, takes a deep, ragged, wheezing uh, breath and then lets out sort of a choking, sort of gurgled gasp. His body begins to twitch violently as if it's uh, undergoing some sort of seizure uh, and jert. The return to your body is not a pleasant one. Um, in the timeless moments that you were in the eternal hunt, you had never felt more connected to your body. You had never felt more a part of yourself. You had never felt so pure and undiluted. Um, and here you find yourself almost a, a prisoner in a, in a broken vessel. The nervous system is badly damaged. The uh, response time of your limbs is slow, staggeringly so, dangerously so. And your vision is a blur as eyes that have not seen for days begin to pump uh, fresh, renewed blood into them. And you feel that life force slowly spreading uh, from your heart into the rest of your body. And finally, you are able to look around and you see that there are three dwarves uh, dressed in priestly vestments and your allies uh, stand around you looking on. Uh, Jirt sits up the scars of the surgery, replanting his entire spine and head back onto his body, having left the runes scarred around his neck. Uh, his skin a little bit more gray and dull as the life is still returning. Uh, he Welcome back. Put, yeah, he puts his legs off the edge of the table and nods down to Barnabas, and is just catching his breath, unable to say anything. Do not move yep. too much, friend Jert. It's still going to be rough moving. Stanley runs up and bear crush him. Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> uh. He doesn't let go be fine by the way do you still want your ring and gauntlets <coughs> yes damn it okay <clears throat> I'm 
Rajar <laughs> would move up and uh, simply look him in the eyes for a moment as though to check his uh, sanity mm. uh, after seeing him in the fight. And he would just groan to him. You return. You are now outside the world of the living and the world of the dead. I've long since thought you were either very brave or mad. I still have not come to a conclusion. What do you say? Perhaps it takes a bit of both to travel between worlds. <laughs> it gives you a knowing look and then begins to hobble his way for more work. It is good to have you back, Bandon. He nods to you and smiles. Uh, weakly, but he smiles. Armis says to him, Welcome to the leagues of those, who us, uh, those of us who have perished in pursuit of this goal. Here is your welcoming present. And he hands him a weapon that he made along the way. The, the Otug tentacle mixed with cold iron spikes. It's called the Thorned Waster. Hey. The Thorn uh, Waster, nice. He will uh, re reach out for the weapon and then he grabs it. It just kind of like slumps in his arm. Thank you. Uh, he looks over to the priest. I do not know you, but I appreciate the service you have provided. Um, the, uh, the, the three dwarves, uh, the sort of older, kind of more wizened one says, uh, ah, it's nothing. You truly are a good and just man for these people to seek your renewal, especially at our exorbitant prices, <laughs> but also that Moradin would see fit to welcome you back. He can see through to the heart of things. And I imagine that he saw in you a great tool to be used against evil. Hmm. Drake considers this and gives them a solid nod. And then turns back to the rest of the party. I can't lay here all day. Someone help me up. Damn, it puts you back down. And uh, Dirt's going to try to stand. All right. So um, currently you would have raised dead sickness uh, four. Um, and then each time you get a long rest it will diminish by one until it finally disappears but this is everything you do so attack rolls saving throws ability checks um, okay. so however you want to interpret that um through role play is up to you but the manner of your death um my take is that essentially you're having to relearn your uh your body because i mean your spine was torn out uh yeah. yeah and so whatever necromancy was used to kind of weave that back into place um it is not perhaps natural and it is certainly not your own and so there's almost like you sort of mastering whatever has been done to your body to sort of regain control of it all right he uh slowly like one leg at a time there's a little bit of shaking but eventually he gets the standing bit down, um, but he does seem just slower and to stride with less power in each step for now. Do we need to get out the wheelchair we made for Rafina? I think I can manage. As long as we're not going anywhere anytime soon. And he takes a look around. So you made it to Hammerfest. One of them. It is good to see Southern 
dignitaries and ideals are appreciated here. We will be welcomed. But we should be wary. Your information that you gathered has warned us that there are war singers around. And uh, Jarrett will just kind of fall into the back of the group, uh, keeping to himself, trying to re-grasp how it is to move, feeling gravity again, feeling the air of this plane. All right. Um, it is, by the time they finish the ritual, uh, high noon. So what, uh, what would you guys like to do um, with the rest of your day? With the time as it marches forward, there's a lot happening in the world. One of my first lines of questioning would be if Kareem the merchant made it to this town, because this is where he would have ended up. Mm. Uh, yeah, you ask about Kareem, and uh, you find out very quickly that uh, he did, in fact, make it here. Um... And he, after resting up, uh, left with the intention of trying to reach uh, Denevar along the eastern road. So he would have gone this way. Hmm. Yeah. Good, uh, good luck. Uh, Leo but there. but when you go and ask about uh ask around about him um the local merchants guild says that uh he was thankful that you saved his life uh and gave him another chance he told us that if you were to inquire about him uh to give you uh this and so um they hand over to you uh, a diamond uh, worth 300 gold. Oh, Kareem, you beautiful, beautiful man. He had a very good line of credit, they explained to you, that he that he pulled upon to uh, resupply for his journey uh, east, but also um, to, to pay his dues. All right, awesome. I'll make sure one of the druids gets that. All right. As, See, as seeing that, that you, seeing that you're happy about that, the uh, the the members of the the clerks at the merchants guild say, uh, "Oh, well, if you like that, you're in for a treat. Uh, the Hammerfast holds are known for their gemstones." I'm so happy to be here. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'll confer with the group about the the diamonds that we want to buy, or if any extraneous spellcasting stones are required. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, don't oh, be afraid. Okay. I'm about to drop some dice. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, whoops. Did that roll? It's a bad time to tell you about my unending paranoia of dice. <laughs> <laughs> my line of work is a problem. Whoa. That is a lot of dice. Yeah, uh, Jerry, you get all of that. That's the big. That's the big counterplay Eight. when you're playing IRL D and D, and you're not the DM. It's just to like roll meaningful dice that don't mean anything, but just stare down the DM as you do it. So, <laughs> yeah. No, don't do that. That's bad. Yeah, so George play. just spending his day getting uh, doctored up by uh, Ray. Okay. All right. And I believe I told you guys last week about the house of marvelously mysterious and magical, mythical, and unmundane goods. Oh yes. Okay, gotcha. We we clear them out of uh, health potions. I'm going to that document now. There's oh. only one one potion in question, which is the supreme, which is like 1,400 gold, I want to say. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if he might be open to a trade of hydra blood for supreme healing potions because that is the precursor. So like with two. Hydra blood, bloods equal one supreme potion because he'd be able to double his profit. In essence, it is one of the ingredients. True, but there are other ingredients that he would still have to cover the cost from. Okay. Um, but he would definitely be willing to buy um those from you. We have four. How much would would he buy them for? Okay. Um, I'm looking it up. Did I give you a value when we uh first did it? 
I do not believe so. Okay, then that would be listed in the document. So let me go grab that real quick. That dwarven family we rescued, do we send them here or were they on their way to Brindle? They're definitely in the hold somewhere. Yeah, because I think we wanted him to speak with the king on our behalf. Yeah. Um, but yeah, not sure where. We, we, the safest bet is probably the main hold because he is like right hand friend of the king, but who knows? Mm -hmm. yeah. You definitely feel that they're, they're offering you 100 gold per vial uh, yeah. because regionally they don't have any hydras nearby um that haven't already been like hunted to extinction essentially um and so it is valuable but it's not as valuable as you would hope um, yeah, uh, honestly like being able to regenerate 1d4 hit points for a minute it's worth way more than 100 gold oh we can just drink this yeah hydro blood when consumed uh you can regain uh regen hit points uh yeah oh shit it's, it's like the troll's blood yeah. Oh, well, glad we still have this. That's great. Yeah, we're okay. going to keep that. All right. Or it could be used as one of the core ingredients of a supreme healing, which don't underestimate, especially if somebody's yeah. feeding that with medicine, the, the value oh. of a supreme healing potion. That's a big that's a big heal if somebody with medicine administers it. What's the formula on that? Uh, Let's see... Uh, all of the potions of healing use the previous potion of healing as a base. Okay. Um, and then you would throw that in, and then it would just be those plus ingredients money. plus some, you know, plus some money, essentially, to represent miscellaneous ingredients plus the time. Uh, but yeah, you could technically make one, but it's, you know, as a more expensive item, it's going to take more checks to make, aka more time to, to create. Yeah. It's definitely an item that you think it's like really expensive but it's very expensive because it's essentially meant for higher level parties that have like disposable income and you know their action economy is super valuable so they're at a level where a basic bitch healing potion is probably not going to be enough in certain situations um so it, it is a hundred percent a luxury item for anyone but like the most wealthy and high level parties to to craft or to purchase yeah, I don't expect I'll have time. We'll just drink it. It was blood. Um, but yeah, I think that's all we... Unless someone wants the climbing potions that are in here. Because there is occasionally times when we run into climbing challenges that are difficult. <laughs> Ray would look at you meaningfully. <laughs> and they're pretty cheap. They're only 180 gold per. So like if Ray Jr. Or I mean Ray Fina wants one just to have. or Yeah, at least just one remembering how difficult it was just to fucking climb up that uh, lion statue. Okay, we spend 1,030 GP in this store clearing them out, basically. And then, yeah, uh, what I had put into chat with you, Barnabas, uh, 400 gold of diamond dust, if they have it. Yep, and I think we should purchase a or, second uh, 300 gold diamond so that you each can have one. Yeah. So, 1730. Oh, I will make a Actually, note of I'm that. I'm thinking maybe 500 gold worth of diamond dust and use one of those because I have greater restoration 18. repaired now. I could probably drop uh, that on Jert and bring them down to minus three instead of four. 18. Okay, that's 1830 gold. And that's where we're at right now. Where's that leave us? Okay. Now, the individual that you were referring to earlier, the dwarf that you helped, was Caden Brightcoin. Um, his wife, Nelu, and his son, Remus. And your understanding is, yes, that they would have headed south towards this very town slash the Hammer Fast Holds um, as soon as the decision was made, right, to leave Jarlin's Ferry um they were they were heading out so if you do ask about them um especially at the merchants guilds uh caden brightcoin is a well-known entity um and the dwarves over at the uh, the merchant field would say uh oh caden brightcoin uh he came through here uh i want to say a few days ago um, 
was heading uh, to the to see the king. Apparently, this has dire news uh, of the battle uh, happening to the north. The one who had taken out Jelen's ferry in Terrelton. A massive army marches from the west towards the east. More than preserve us that they don't come south. I'd hate to have to leave behind everything we've worked hard to build to take refuge in the earth. As we're walking around, do we hear more of that same rhetoric from some of the other people? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, these are, I mean, like, caste system-wise, these are, these are hill dwarves. These are dwarves that, that like the sky, and they like weather, and they like seeing other races, and they like working the earth, uh, the soil, um, and growing crops that need the sun and the rain and things like that. They, they are um, a, a people who live in both worlds and walk the line between two, two worlds. Um, the, the higher ups, the, the more noble, the more ancient, uh, clans, they, they would essentially be mountain dwarves, uh, statistically, and they see the hill dwarves, um, proclivities as a necessary evil, but somewhat distasteful. Um, everything that you need, the mountain, uh, will provide, and everything you want is hidden within the earth, waiting to be discovered. Any any other um, questions about the people, the town? Is there anything you're looking for? What what are you what are you hoping to uh, discover or be engaged with? Uh, do you just want like general rumors of of what is happening? Like, we definitely want like information on the king, right? Like we're we're moving towards the king is our ultimate goal. There is a decision to be made. In a discussion that should be made in private about this, there is an alternative route available to us. Okay. Since we know that there are war singers in this territory, do mm. we hear any um, weird dissension? Any weird, um, uh, I guess, hearsay that's kind of being spread? Would that require, uh, like, a check, or...? Oh, yeah, yeah, this, so this would definitely just be kind of gathering information and rumors and whatnot from the, uh, the community. Uh -huh. Okay. So, why don't you, as a... Well, let me kind of figure out what each group is doing. Sounds like you want to gather information. Um, I'll just kind of run down, run down our list of heroes, uh, such as it is. Uh, so... What, um... Uh, Ark, or oh, what does Rajar want to do? Rajar would be asking about uh, new magic or politicians or sudden changes in politicians' hearts. Mm, okay, fair enough. The courts or um, popular rumor mills and whatnot. Right. The telltale signs of war singers. Yeah. Uh, what is uh, Layla's goal here in town? Okay, so sorry. Uh, I have a question for the group, right? Because, you know, what one option is to go to the king. We have another option, and it may... We have Brightcoin to kind of get us in with the king, and we have Umeg, who puts us at a disadvantage there, but we could also use him and his infamy to try to learn information about the rebels and the civil war brewing and sort of falsely join them to try to find the red hand that way if we want. Yeah, I think we need to figure out first by talking to Umegs what areas we can bring him to before we, like, what areas are off limits for him. Right. Yeah. So that we know not to go there. Uh -huh. So, um, as you turn to Umeg, um, you don't even know where he is. There is a dwarf, however, who has his hood up. And there's shadows from the, the hood concealing his face. All you see is a beard coming out of shadow. It could be any dwarf. Mm -hmm. uh, Scooby-Doo on mask time. Just... Uh, <laughs> uh, as you reach for his hood, he says, No, it's me, Umex. Oh, okay. It is? I thought yes. you wanted to pull a fast one and you know, no. get out of here with uh, taking your place. And... 
This here is what you call a disguise. No one's going to figure it out unless you make a big scene about it. This Why, I even went to the Temple of Moradin. Nobody paid me a second mind. Hmm. Jurt remembers that. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, one of the bennies of uh, dwarves kind of all looking very similar, even to other dwarves, is that, I mean, he, it is relatively simple for him to disguise himself. Um, ha you can't really pull a facial recognition uh, scan on everyone having the biggest, richest, hardiest beard. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, it makes it it makes it a lot harder to figure out who's who. Um, so I wear, right. They wear the beads in them and stuff. Right. Yeah. I mean, obviously, here in this more modern era, like you got people, you know, fashionistas kind of going out of their way to to be seen. Um, but these are also also a lawful people by default, and lawful people generally are okay with societal uniforms, for lack of a better term. Which is to say, you know, we all kind of just dress the same because it feels good to all be doing the same thing. Uh, stark contrast to like the gnomes, right? Who are relatively chaotic by nature, um, and they they all want to stand out. They all want to look cool and be be unique and special and all that. Um, okay, so so Layla, um, what do you, so you you want to know the situation with Umegs before you make your decision? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. I, okay. I guess we'll talk to him, pull him to the side, away from a main street, sort of in an area where. I'm pretty sure we aren't, you know, having people overhear us. Mm -hmm. um, and just ask him. Okay. You're pretty famous still around here, I would assume, is the reason for this. Do you... I mean, you know what's going on with the War Singers. And I'm sure you can admit in your heart that it does disgust you to see your people used by the Red Hand. We could use you and your name to try to get in with them if you think that's a good idea oh. I'll tell you what I know and then perhaps that will mm -hmm. help us figure out what to do next of course I just know you. I honestly us... didn't think you'd come here I thought I warned you away pointed out what a fool's errand this whole thing is going to be but uh, let me walk you through it. All right, so get ready for a lore, do uh, lore drop. <sighs> the Hammerfast holds. Currently, we're engaged in a secret war with the Drow. They're a type of elf who lives in the Underdark. Uh, they aren't much of an issue, but there are disputes over territories not uh, it could be a lot worse than it is but it also gives the people some focus uh, an enemy to unite against uh, the general consensus is the surface is a lost cause and, uh, full of greedy and selfish uh, humans and their allies who want nothing to do with the dwarves uh, save take our treasures for themselves but below ground we needed something to focus on, and a war uh, of convenience, nearly, against the drow is just the thing to keep people focused and fighting and industrious. Why, I'd imagine that on the other side of the stone fence, as it were, the drow continue the battle for much the same reason. The Underdark, you see, is a huge place. Territorial disputes even uh, for ore of a great rarity, is a fool's errand. You spend more resources in battle than if you just went and found another rich deposit. No, sadly, it's all a bit of propaganda, that. A good excuse to stay in game, as it were. Um, the dwarves you see here in Kern Dural, Valdir, and Hundlestone, they are called hill dwarves, and not in a pleasant way. These are people who love the surface eh, as much as they love the deep places of the world. And they want the dwarven people to reconnect 
with the rest of the veil. Uh, current Durol is uh, run by the Black Barrel Clan, and uh, they excel at brewery and uh, agriculture and a bit of animal husbandry. Um, spicy peppers are their uh, prime agricultural exports, uh, as well as their fine mead and uh, ales. They have a lot to lose with a battle coming up and could be easily swayed. The king's solution would be to have Kern Dural pack everything up and go beneath the ground. But these people have worked hard to work this land and make it their own. I doubt they're willing to lose all of that on the king's pride. But without the backing of Val Hindarlin, they will likely fall in battle. And as you look around, you see that Kern Dural does have some pretty pretty tough looking dwarves here. Um, but other than like a local garrison, they don't seem to have like any of the fabled like dwarven siege engines or golems or like any of the stuff that you've heard about in stories that made dwarves like super badass fighters. You don't see like griffin riders, none of that kind of stuff. Um, this seems to be like any other farming and merchant uh based uh human settlement just you know dwarf themed um stouter stone buildings um stouter stony people uh you do uh, i mean it's a pretty easy assessment to say that if the red hand came here these people would be would put up a fight but they would probably meet the same fate as Terrellton and Drellens fairy uh he says now Valdir, which is to the north of us, uh, that's ruled by the Kolhur clan. These are miners, and they're still considered lowly because of their desire to come to the surface. They work these mountains, particularly this range, and he points off of the horizon, that you see there. They work in harmony with the earth and the land so as not to strip mine away the valuable stone and gems that might be found there. Either way, they lack the wealth and the influence of the clans dwelling within Val Hinderlin, for the true valuable ore is always deep down by the lava. Like block 12, you gotta go that deep to get the good stuff. So. But those people would be more like to follow the king's commands for they could withdraw into their minds which no doubt link up uh in some places with the mines and tunnels of val Hinderlin, likely at secured military checkpoints then you have hundlestone hundlestone uh. They're known for their merchants and their traders. No particular clan holds sway over them. They have a council of uh, elected officials that make the decisions for them. In fact, on that council, they have a gnome and a human. I was going to say, it sounds like Denivar. Hondelstone has been a trade hub in this region for 1,200 years. The... <sighs> They have survived a number of wars and calamities, sometimes being destroyed, but always rebuilding in the same spot, on the same foundations. They uh, specialize in a special type of rabbit called a rock hare that they have domesticated. The, the meat of a rock hare is hearty, savory, with a slight tinge of sweetness to it. It represents their main uh, their main export, uh, but they themselves specialize in the conversion of coin and wealth from one culture to another, uh, as well as uh, jewel crafting and all manner of trade. They have much to lose and are close to Val Hinderlin. Because of their value, the king would likely offer them some deal that if they were to retreat into the earth, when it was safe to return to the surface, he would, from the treasury, help them rebuild their what they've lost. 
They will be the hardest to turn against the king, if that's your goal, and the hardest to sway to our cause. They are consumed with the same sort of greed that uh, poisons the king. And then, of course, there's Val Hinderlin, the seat of power. Its solid stone and adamantine gate can be closed, peeling off access from the surface. Other points of entry are well guarded, trapped, and warded. The king holds court here. It was founded by Velgar Hammerfist. Long and longer still, beyond the memory of most human scholars. His bloodline has always sat on the throne. Uh, alas, the king is not the man I once knew. Greed has overtaken his senses. And he steals from his own people with new and inventive taxes and taxations. I had enough, and I tried to rise up against him. I tried to push for a new way of doing things. But you have to understand, I was going up against centuries, over 15 centuries of politics of tradition to do so it did not go well val hinderlin is also home to the star forge which is well it is the greatest forge in in all the land a place where one can be bound to a weapon with their very soul empowering it with their essence and in turn being empowered by it. I know a thing or two about that as they shunt my gun into an interdimensional space. That's pretty cool. All right, so uh, he, he seems like he's kind of talked himself out a little bit, but he would answer questions if you had them. I have a little note from this. So going back to uh, Valdir, was it pronounced? The northern settlement mm -hmm, mm -hmm. run by the Colhewer clan? Yes. I look at Jocelyn. Care to elaborate on that? Uh, is Was Morlin like Dwarvish royalty? Well, he never he never mentioned that he was. I don't know if we have time for this, but I'd definitely love a tiny chunk of backstory as to why a human was raised by a dwarf, because we never really got that. Oh, okay. Yeah, she tells you. Um, well, uh, I was orphaned, you see, and living on the streets of Trellon's Ferry, I, um, well, I would get by by stealing a bit of food, waiting for the free sweet rolls every Sunday, but I wanted something more. I thought perhaps if I could get something valuable, I might be able to sell it to a merchant coming and going through the town. And well, I tried to steal magic weapon from uh, from my father before he ever was such a person, and. He caught me, and when he saw my fear and my desperation, he saw how small and hungry I was. I think, I think he just, he just knew. He just made a decision right then and there. He, he didn't punish me. He didn't turn me in to the guards. He just, he just put me to work. I said. If you need something in this world, you got to work for it. And if finding work's the issue, well, it's not an issue anymore. And so, at first, uh, I would leave and go and sleep in some alley or tree down by the riverbanks. But 
he realized pretty quick the situation and started letting me sleep in the smithy. And then one day, as we were packing up for the day and stoking the, the flames and putting things uh, in order for the evening, he saw me settling in and said uh, he had a surprise for me. And and he had made for me in his spare room my own my own bedroom. And and that's when I knew that uh, that I was finally home. Barnabas looks visibly touched by the story, even if he doesn't want to show his emotions. Mm. Damn. But he never made any mention of being any big to do. He just said that he had grown tired of dwarven politics and stubbornness and the way they treated others and that he had a soft spot for humans and the other shorter lived races he he wanted to keep an eye on things he said and we really should have saved him uh wow wow it's heavy and i imagine he came from Beldir. i'm just they're bald deer wow well we might be going there and we might uncover some things about your father and I hope that doesn't bring up too many painful memories. Uh, she shakes her head, says, um, if we have time, I'd, I'd love to learn more, but there'll be time enough for that later. You're we'll lucky. find him again. Sorry. He seemed like a good man, and I didn't know all that about you or him, but it's kind of nice that there's someone with a similar situation to what I had. You were adopted by a dwarf too? <laughs> well, he wasn't a dwarf. And I stayed in his tavern's basement, but sure. just being taken in there's a lot of chance to get to that place and it's good that you know how hard it is to get to that safe point I do not know if this is rude of me to ask but how many people within this group were adopted. Barnabas would point out that while his upbringing was not one that was difficult or, you know, rack wrought with the peril of exposure and poverty, uh, but he was adopted by a gnomish man who lives in Denevar who basically just needed an heir and a side project. Well, I mean, I had three older surrogate sisters of a kind and as said we, we worked for the gentleman he gave us a place to sleep down below and food in return for it until I you know you all know I have some strange skills and connections and then decided that, that was going to be a very possibly dark life that got me dead in an alley so first chance to leave the city I did uh, I don't know Ray's backstory but I think she's mentioned that she was taken in by Warkle mm -hmm. I don't know if it was a bad or uh, otherwise situation that led to that but oh uh, for Ray um, yes uh uh, Rayfina's parents were uh, were killed. Uh, they were killed by uh, monsters.
Specifically, uh, they were torn apart by a, uh, a pair of owl bears. Uh, yikes, that's rough. Yeah. Were those owl bears um, druids? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. It's unknown. It's unknown. Mm. When did uh, Thalen's parents leave Drone's Ferry? Five years ago. Okay, so you were mostly a grown-ass adult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a grown-ass adult, not just a normal adult. And Thanlin, they left for for where now? Oh, to be um merchants in Brindle. Yeah. Wait, yeah. how old is everyone here? I don't well, think I've ever asked that. We know Our boss is twenty-two. <laughs> We've been going from one thing to the next so fast. <laughs> There's so many small things we haven't even learned about each other. <sighs> I'm as wibbly wobbly for me, not sure. <laughs> uh, that's, that's fair. Yeah. Wait, what would what, you say, Thanlin? Isn't Jert like 1920? Wanna say? Perhaps. I have him in his mid twenties, Meadow. But in terms of like how old he actually is, because a lot of time has passed here on the prime. So like, if we go by this age, he's like fifty or sixty. Oh, Captain America rules. Yeah, gotcha. Oh, nice, nice. Great, JR is over a hundred. Rage. Well, how old were you? Were you? The dry laugh. <laughs> shit. You died, Rage. Wait, were you a young man? No. When the Red Hand attacked us, I was one of the eldest of the Ushabdi. My life was extended long beyond its age. My children had children, and their children had children. My children most recently had died before I had. It was my duty to stand guard in the tunnels. For decades, that is all I did. I know not my age, as my people never counted. We counted with feelings, with decay. We tracked how old we were by our body's decomposition. That is something I didn't do. I just kept alive, rotting, but stalwart. I don't know how long I was in the sarcophagus, but I assume it's been eons. Oh, you're definitely the oldest. Barnabas, how old are you? I am 22. Get the fuck out of here. What's wrong with the B-22? No one likes you when you're 22. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, that explains it. Mm. I mean, you look older, that's all. It's the smoking. <laughs> yeah. He's been doing it since he's like four, you know? Oh, yeah, fair. Oh, strong, strong lungs, though. <laughs> strong lungs. Yeah. Absolutely. Apparently, uh, that's character. Yeah. Have How you, old is Layla? You, you never got pneumonia because your, your lungs are so strong. That's right. That's right. Yep. Can't survive in there. Mm -hmm. Came out with a cigar, boss baby style. <laughs> yep. Uh, L Layla, are you gonna answer how old you are? Oof. Oof. I uh. Since you started this conversation. I'm nineteen. Nineteen. Oh what? my god. Oh. Man. No. Who's our youngest? Is that Layla? What's Thanlin? Wait, how old was Orion? Oh. Uh, oh yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> how do mass years work? <sighs> um, I well, next time we see him, remember. we'll just have to measure it by how low. <laughs> it's, that was bad. Never mind. Uh, I don't <laughs> remember how nice. what they list him as, but I had him as 22. Hey. <sighs> Good distraction. Um, thank you all. 
Yeah, we don't often take the time just to sit and hash things out. This is so. <laughs> Bad, bad news bears. Mouse uh, mouse can reach adulthood at age five, and they live about forty years. So I I hope you're not twenty two. Okay, Ryan's so then I'm gonna, so, so I'm gonna have to adjust that then because okay, I, I right. am as like uh, if it was in human years, it'd be like early twenties. Ah, uh, he'd be like seven or eight. Oh yeah, my yeah, something, something like that then. We have an eight. Which real those. That really explains that first encounter where you killed someone and lost it. Just yeah. a freaking seven-year-old in war. I got even sadder news for you. I got even sadder news for you. Claude's only going to live 10 to 15 years. Oh, no. He's going to yeah. live forever. Oh, fair, fair. As long as yeah. you're, I guess as long as you're alive, he'll be alive, yeah. So for 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? It doesn't sound so bad. Maybe I should go to the Ghost Lord. <laughs> hey, you can come with me to the Tomb of Bradley Flameheart. We got something better for us waiting there. Probably vampirism. It's probably vampirism. It's definitely vampirism. Yeah. <laughs> An easier route to power than Lichdom, to be sure. Sexier, too. It depends what you're into, but on the whole, yes. <laughs> For sure. And Don't you then... like have sparkles when you're a vampire? <laughs> depends on the bloodline, I guess. So. And then I had listed here Ray is 19. Was that correct? Mm. I believe so. Okay. Why do we have so many young people in this party? Because we're playing a tabletop <laughs> game. The, the horrors of war, you know? Yeah. It's funny. It's a, this is a co coming of age adventure. If we took the. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, so, Ray, whoa, whoa, so, Ray whoa. Fina, so, so, we just had this talk about lore yesterday. If Rafina is 17, then she would probably be about 28, 29 years old. Uh, because Fearbogs reach maturity at 30. And the oldest of them lived for 500 years. Holy shit. Yeah. Jelly. Wow. But if we add the average party age, because mm. Rage is a couple thousand years old, <laughs> on average. Yeah, excuse it. So our, our, much. Yeah, yeah, because math is a great tool. <laughs> yeah, we're very mature. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. I think, um, it, I think, it I think also, I think also part of it is you guys started at level one or not level one but level three right so you started relatively low level and you had to be connected to the world and you know it, a lot of people if they're doing lower level characters will be a, a bit younger I think. yeah it, it yeah. feels yeah. awkward yeah. to be an older person coming in as a level one yes like you know this unless, is just unless something general. major has happened to them to where they de-leveled like like crazy mm. yeah Hey, who dwarves? Back on track. <laughs> All right. What do with we the, want to with do? our lore drops out of the out with of the way? You're now you're now equipped to celebrate birthday parties and help with the dwarves' political situation. Mm. So I, I have Rajar and Ray. They are queued up to do some investigating. Layla, what are you going to do with your time in the town? I, I think Layla's going to do some rumor gathering as well, just okay. listening into discontent and rumor threads. Okay. Uh, Barnabas? I think it's pretty safe just to say that he does commerce and crafting, but the uh, okay. essential other thing is he just wants to buy everyone, like, the, the whole town. Like, he wants to, like, <laughs> whatever the VIP staying package is in this town. He's splashing out for it. Cause... Oh, geez. So you, you want to be, like, dropping plunder like a Skull and Shackles pirate? Yes, I that... do. Yes, oh. I do. I, I want. Mean... I, we had such a rough time in the Thorn Waste. We deserve this. Okay. Okay. Um, well, as you know, as a Skull and Shackle uh, uh, viewer, like, plunder is pretty pricey. I mean, you, you will it to insert to the economy? Uh, one, thousand, one or two? One, th one yeah, thousand it's... gold? Yeah, absolutely. I will pay Man. one thousand gold. All right, in that case, everyone else's checks will be made at advantage uh, for everything that they do while they're in town. Uh, and word would spread, spread quickly of your uh, reputation and arrival. Mm, mm. About that last part. I've made mistakes. <laughs> okay. But hey, we are, trying to, we are trying to befriend the dwarves. We want them to be excited that we're coming. Uh, we do. We but that's definitely also going to tip them. off the war singers. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But maybe we do want that. I don't know. Okay. Nope. I I leave it up to the discretion of the group. They would see Barnabas like pooling up a big bag of money to go hand to the inn. 
I was thinking he he is crafting himself a money gun and is just shooting d bills <laughs> everywhere. I think Thalen would try and stop Barnabas from doing that. In, in Skull and Shackles, it it kind of represents repairs to the ship, your entire like crew going on shore leave, you know, like just a lot of like the ephemeral, like nobody wants to track those minutia uh, kind of thing. And if you don't drop it. Um, it essentially means that you're trying to handle everything in house. Um, and it is, I believe every plunder is 2000 gold. Also pirates though, are generally doing a lot better in the wealth department. Cause you know, they're constantly pirating people and stuff for you guys dropping that much wealth would essentially be greasing the wheels. It would be assumed that, you know, you're, you're bribing people to do what you need them to do, whether that is to spread word of your arrival or to spread misinformation. Um, people are more likely to open up if there is a uh, big cash money prize involved. It's it's the little things like that. Your your allies, your B team, they're out there uh, spending money and spreading wealth as well to sort of, again, grease those wheels and get things set up. Um, if you just needed to have like a good time and a good stay for everybody um, that is assembled, uh, B team included, uh, you could probably do so uh, one day here at like, you know, staying in a really good place, good food, good drinks, all that. You could probably handle that for the whole squad for only about 100 gold, Barnabas. Okay, so yeah, yeah and yeah. I think I would take Thanlin's advice, but I would think on this, I think that this might be a good thing to do either in Vol Valdir or Hundlestone, um, you know, once we're closer and once we've already tipped them. It's not going to take long for them to figure out we're here. We're pretty mm. well known. Uh, but yes, I do think that we'll, we're just going to buy a really nice night stay here in Kern Dural, and then we'll maybe drop some Buku bucks later on. Because okay. Hundle, Hundlestone's going to need some convincing. Yeah, I feel like the and close, they, I feel like the closer we get to the capital, uh, yeah, the more influence that we're able to spread would be better. Yeah, and they're also the money town. They're the traders. Yeah. So, all right, uh, I'll mark a hundred gold off. Do we want to give the Red Hand that much of an advantage with them knowing that we're here? Because those war singers hit hard. We almost died to them twice. When was that? Well, I mean, as as far as we know, they they already have kill orders on us on site, like on site. So they're probably tracking us wherever the fuck we go. Honestly, literally any one of these people could be a red hand, and they could already have sent word back. Like you know, it, we're, we they know who we are on site. I just and, don't. I mean, walk sometimes into a sometimes spies, even in a magical setting, are not magical, right? There could just be dwarves that are on the payroll. There could yeah. be. Yeah, like that are just right. like okay, right. This isn't our war. This isn't our problem. I'll keep a lookout for some some extra money. You know, money and talks. like yeah. we're impossible to miss. You know, we got Radriar. We, we got an assortment of furbolgs and halflings and our B team. <laughs> Ray Fina just towering over everyone. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you you brought Raijen with you, yeah. right? Was, yeah. There's a there's a goliath uh celebrity chef with his two bison i mean this yeah it, you guys are undisguised either carnival folk or adventurers that's uh that's the only two things that people think that you could be <laughs> yeah all right um jert what are you getting up to in the town um he spent the first part of the day getting healed by rafina and then when she goes off to do investigations he actually goes to find umegs Okay. Earlier when we were discussing things, you said that you had found a temple of Moradin, and no one seemed to bother you there. <laughs> oh, sorry, my puppy. <laughs> um, could you show me this place? Uh, it's it's the place where you woke up. So, oh, that was the back of the temple. Could you mm -hmm. show me where they usually do their prayers? I'm not I... much of a religious man myself, but I feel like I... I don't know. Yeah, sure. Uh, he'll return with you to the to the Temple of Morden and kind of uh, not evangelize, but he'll kind of fill you in on Morden and his um, his kind of involvement in this particular campaign setting. Yeah, Jurt wants to try to pay a little bit of respects to that because he the words that the priest said kind of stuck with him. Mm -hmm. um, if 
I guess I could make, if we're doing checks to like gather info, I could do like a, a perception or insight or something for when I'm in there to see if I hear any like people talking under their breath in the pews or like other rumors on the way in or out. Like things that are other than religion, but that's not necessarily why he's there. Yeah, let's check out. All right, that's what I'm doing. All right. Okay, so uh, that leaves Stanlin. Stanlin, what are you getting up to? Oh, I thought I was going with Barnabas. Oh, okay. You're going with Barnabas. Got it. All right, so let's deal with um, rumor gathering first. Uh, Raydrar, what is your technique? Uh, what, what skill are you going to try to bring to bear here? The, default, the default would be investigation and... Um, uh, intelligence or investigation charisma but if you want to just try to like mean mug it out of people you could do an intimidation i think it's less mean mug and it's more like looking <laughs> staring down like a creature of time in necromancy and who has been forgotten and lost their kingdom something that some of the dwarves can kind of meet with mm -hmm. and that nothing will stop him from getting this information okay you can kind of just be in the way or you can help him out and make sure nobody else deals with them. All right. Um, I can do investigation charisma based if you'd like. Uh, sure. Yeah, give me a charisma investigation. All right, dude, this is done. Okay. Okay. Um, you, your appearance, um, and your kind of di your, everything about you is intimidating uh, to most of the. Uh, the, the dwarves that you encounter. And while they kind of get that vibe that you are ancient and you have lost much, and there is a certain respect for that, um, they generally seem relatively reticent about uh, discussing openly, um, you know, dwarven rumors and politics as you are uh, making, making your way through the town. Are you guys going separately or as a group through the town? Hmm. Mm. Would, would, li would like Rajar kind of be going off on his own to do this, or would you? Would the three of you be working uh, he, as sort of a team? He wouldn't want to. He wants us to keep uh, the party so they don't get uh, influenced. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, um, Ray, uh, same situation. It would be uh, investigation, intelligence, or charisma, unless you could come up with some other means by which to gather that information. Um. I was thinking perception to see if there is any, um, as she's kind of like people watching, if there's any like unusual, um, behaviors that, or actions that people are taking. Well, I'm not sure if that's a perception or insight. Hmm. Okay. So you, you're actually just people watching just to see what's going on in the town. You're not trying to gather information so much oh, can i interrupt uh, um okay because so, because mine's along the same thought line which is uh -huh. kind of along the line of listening to different conversations and trails try to see like if we overhear something that might give us someone to follow later you know right right, right. overhear a rumor kind of deal so so perception right is for the the literal act of hearing and seeing and perceiving things where investigation comes in is your ability to take the things that you are experiencing and make sense out of them which is why the the, the skill exists um and perception doesn't do everything uh all by itself uh, so the idea of the investigation is that you are not just hearing rumors, you're not just seeing uh, things, but you are making sense of the things that you are seeing and hearing. Does that does that make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah, it helps you distill from the general uh, chatter um, what is actually important, what is actually noteworthy. Okay. Uh, and the only abilities that we can use for this one is either intelligence or charisma? Well, if one of you in? wants to, if one of you wants to do um, a perception check to show that they're kind of listening and you guys are working together, the other, if the first person is successful, the other person can roll with advantage. Or we could say that you guys, one of you rolls with advantage because the other is essentially using their their high perception to help them. That sounds fine. Do you want me okay. to roll the investigation? 
And then I would say that you could use wisdom for this instead of intelligence or charisma, because you guys are uh, using your insight and sort of uh, trying to figure out what have we heard, what have we seen, and how does this make sense? Okay. 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 Yep. All right. Can, Representing can... the day Ooh. of doing the checks there. Okay, Between so the two, you, of us. the two of you um, are much more successful um, in what uh, you are doing, and you hear some pretty juicy rumors. Um, so one of the rumors is there is um, there is a caravan of gold in route to the Hammerfast Holds from the city of Brindle. Apparently Brindle um, has been hearing rumors of an invading army and now with the evidence um, impossible to ignore, they are reaching out to the surrounding settlements to seek allies and aid. And in their desperation, they are attempting to bribe the king of the Hammerfast Holds with a great deal of wealth. Um, and some of the less scrupulous uh, individuals that are talking about this rumor uh, say um, it, it would be the payday of a lifetime. Imagine being a bandit and that, that is the caravan that you end up robbing. Uh, essentially a fortune on wheels. And there's speculation as to how it would go um, like to get to Hammerfest Holds. And the general thought is that it would head south through Prosser, but there is a debate whether or not they would go to Douth or to Hillwatch. Hillwatch being a more roundabout journey, but staying far and away from the invading army. Um, Douth giving them a bit of a shortcut, but bringing them closer to the enemy. Either way, if the rumors are true, it shows that um, the people of Brindle realize their mistake that they are, you know, that their ancestors made, and that the might of the dwarves is still respected and sought after after all these years. The people of Kern Dural are kind of excited at the prospect. Maybe this will be the thing that finally brings the dwarves back into the light, back into the world above. Um, what a grand entrance our people could make to um, rejoin our former allies in a glorious battle uh, to save our lands. Um, but there are naysayers that say that even the greed of the king um, being what it is, his pride would come first. There's no way he would accept uh, such an offering. Uh, and there's no way that he would ever mobilize the dwarves to help anyone. Uh, and of course, a lot of people cite the war against the, the war against the Drow as being, you know, like that's where our resources are going—the war against the Drow. Um, and so, but that is a that's a hot, a hot rumor. Um, it also means that, God forbid, the Red Hand intercept it. Mm -hmm. The king probably has people spying and whatnot. Probably has heard the rumor. If you guys are hearing it, it's a good it's a good thing that you know maybe that maybe the king already knows um but if the, it never makes it here that's a tremendous amount of wealth uh that brindle kind of spent in a in a gambit that might never uh never be recouped and would end up in the hands of the enemy that they could use to to bribe uh mercenaries and al and gain allies so yeah that's a big one uh that's a big one um there are rumors that um, see. let me check my rumor sheet to see if there's any others. I gave you the, the juiciest one that was on there. Um, okay. Crawlum Great Knight is a uh, dwarven scald, and this individual has been spouting off at the mouth a lot about, um, the invading army is uh, is a curse from our ancestors finally come home to roost, teaching those uh, descendants of the cowards and traitors of the past uh, a lesson long overdue. They turn their backs on us, 
and so too will we turn our backs on them. When the call for aid comes, stand with the king. Stand with your backs turned. Let the message be clear. We have been wronged, and it can never be made right. And this Kralum Great Knight has quite a few people kind of buying into this uh, rhetoric, essentially. And let's see. Also, um, there are rumors that the the people of Hillwatch um, are dealing with werewolves. That's generally what they've heard, which is very unfortunate. Um, the people of Hillwatch uh, don't have ac easy access to silver, nor do they have magical weapons. Uh, and, you know, they're surprised that no one has been sent from Hillwatch uh, to Hundlestone to try and acquire such goods. Perhaps they sent aid to Denevar uh, to try to deal with the threat. But if it is werewolves... Um, those people won't last long without um, essentially the right sort of defenses, the right sort of weaponry sent in to aid them. And yeah, let's see. The mouse brigade. Up to Claude and Orion on the case. Right. <laughs> the, mouse, the mouse brigade can only do so much. Fair, fair. Uh, let's see. In Hundlestone, um, there, is, uh, there is rumor in Hundlestone that the the council that's in charge of Hundlestone um, is divided, uh, and there is a lot of infighting happening in Hundlestone. They have been unable to pass any sort of edicts uh, and judge any sort of cases. As any time something is brought before the council, um, it is essentially a hung jury. It's just a like an even split uh, of either indecisiveness or outright um, animosity. And such a shame to see um, such a powerful uh, political organization uh, brought to its knees by infighting. And finally, um, in Valdir, there is rumor that Kregar, um, the master mason and leader of the Kolhuer clan, um, continues to um, hold a grudge against uh, the king um, and all of Val Hidar uh, Hinderlin um, for the caste system and the um, and generally, you know, racism, classism. Uh, they say if he keeps up this kind of behavior, we uh, yeah, we might have uh, another Umeg's Stormsteel on our hands. And Umeg's does acknowledge that Kragar um, was one of his potential allies um, and was pushing him hard to initiate a civil war uh, before he was banished. He found our ally. I mean, did we, though? What do you mean? Uh... All right. So, yeah, you two did a great job uh, with your with your check. Uh, Radriar, um, again, you did not receive uh, much information other than just uh, the kind of passings of the day and reinforcing the basic, like, town brochure stuff that uh, Umegs was uh, already kind of lore dropping on everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh Thanlin and Barnabas, uh, you guys were greasing the wheels of industry, right? Going around, uh, dropping dropping coin, arranging for a good place to stay and all that. Yeah. I feel uh, like I was reining in Barnabas's tendency to spend more than he should. Uh huh. That's fair. Uh -huh. I, I'm, I'm definitely like a little bit unhinged right now because we've been in the wild for so long and I've got a hole burning in my pocket. Um, but the thing I would ask for maybe like at the bar is if the bartender knows if there's anyone around that sells wagons, but like, you know, kind of like badass wagons. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. There is a wagoneer, wagon right. Uh, located in Hundlestone, renowned for their battle wagons. Fuck yeah. Oh, oh, see, these are essentially mobile home fortresses. 
in the Hundlestone? In Hundlestone, yep. The dream's back alive. Battle wagons. And yeah, I just, yeah, the rumor collecting at the bar as one does. Okay. Um, all right. So just, you, uh, you want to give me an investigation intelligence? Sure. Okay. Since we're, um, since I'm with Barnabas and we're just observing, should I use Know Thy Enemy to get a grass as a combat proudness to mm -hmm. sort out any war singers that might be hiding? Hmm. Uh, post up the ability. Uh, let's see. Another creature. Um, capabilities compared to your own. DM tells you if the creatures are equal superior. Um, I think if they were disguised by illusion or um, a performance or a deception kind of thing, they would be presenting to to this ability what they would like. I I don't know if it's coming across as completely supernatural. Uh, let's see. Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the general, the general take is this: this would not be able to like strip through illusions, uh, per se. Um, okay. you, you would be seeing what is essentially being presented to you, right? Because this ability is is you interacting and observing them um and seeing them how they move how they carry themselves uh that that sort of thing um i would certainly have them if they were doing performance or deception roll against your path of insight um to, to make sure that they you know that you you had a chance to kind of suss out if they were being um suspicious or falsely presenting to you so i will keep that in mind all right, okay. with your with your uh, investigation, uh, you uh, you hear rumors that uh, the people of Douth, uh, far to the northeast, um, are dealing with uh, a strange disease, wherein when you catch it, uh, you laugh yourself to death. Which sounds a little a little weird and horrifying. Um, they also tell the story of the the brave defenders of Drellin's Ferry who refused to leave when um, all hope was lost. That stood proudly um, on the docks and shores of the river and stared down uh, the oncoming invading horde and. Uh, refused to give up their land uh to, to refuse to give up a single inch and in their deaths perhaps inspired others to stand and fight and there's a lot of huzzas and drinking because you know this is the kind of thing you can romanticize while you are safe and warm and drinking uh mead uh far from battle uh, -huh. mm. uh let's see any other information? Uh, oh, yes. You did. Um, you have heard that um, below Val Hinderlin, um, they have encountered something terrible in the tunnels. The dwarves were too greedy and dug too deep uh, and have encountered a great, a great evil but um, the Miners Guild and the King's uh, people are keeping it on the hush-hush. And there are speculations and rumors as to what they could have unearthed. Uh, popular theories are a Baylor. Uh, others are those fools once again tried to tunnel into the Thorn Waste and released into the, uh, the tunnels some foul, um, undead or, or plant-based horror, uh, or that they have uncovered uh, a Mind Flayer city. And they begin to tell you at length about these creatures called Mind Flayers. They have the heads of octopus, and they eat brains. They have psychic powers. It, it's all a bit unbelievable. <laughs> and then someone else just argues that 
that's all just nonsense. The the battle against the drow has slowed uh, mining and uh, resource gathering uh, to nearly a standstill as they fight to protect their borders against the shadowy enemy. And then they all look to a painting of the king on the wall that they might, um, you know, raise their mugs uh, in a huzzah to the great king. I, what you talking about? You notice about, when they boy? do that, you notice when they do that, not everybody's huzzah is very enthusiastic. And aside from gold, is there anything that the king values? Well, it's like a capitulation that he likes. Oh, man. Okay. He values tradition. Um, he values uh, the strength of the dwarven people. Um, and he values the dedication to hold tight to one's grudges, um, lest you forget and be fooled again. Uh, yes, that is King Othric Hammerfast. Wow. Mm. So yeah, that's what you uh, you guys figured out. And then going back to, um, let's see. Shirt and Umegs. All right, you return to the temple uh, once you were raised, and in doing so, um, you um, you kind of walk in. This dwarven temple um, is exquisitely crafted uh, from stone. Um, there are windows of colored uh, leaded glass that uh, depict dwarven champions in ages past doing incredible acts of heroism and um loyalty and and all that good stuff um the place is opulent but without being too ostentatious everything seems to have a purpose um everything seems to have a place and um the the, the true beauty of it comes from the just the meticulous craftsmanship of every boss relief every every beautiful pillar every exquisitely polished uh stone bench um this is a place that was built um with pride but also with uh with love and devotion and perhaps in the act of building such a beautiful thing they were trying to convey to their god morden how much he mattered to them and how thankful they were for everything that he had done uh Umeg explains to you that he is uh often called the soul forger and it is believed that uh, he is the original creator of the dwarves, having forged them himself um, to have uh, caretakers of the world kind of go out into the world and sort of build it and repair it and keep it safe. And so, in a way, some might interpret that it is the divine responsibility of dwarves uh, to defend those who need uh, defending and to push back uh, those who would destroy what others have worked hard to make. Which sounds like it is in direct uh, contrast with what King Othric believes. I guess he'll uh, talk with Umegs privately in one of the pews mm -hmm. and say, is your king not very religious himself? Oh, well. When you get into politics, you start to view everything as a tool. A tool to gain power and a tool to maintain power. And you tell yourself small lies that you're doing what you're doing for the people. You're doing what you're doing for the future. You're doing the things that you're doing for stability. You're doing what no one else has the courage to do because you know it needs to be done to protect the greater good, the way of life, the next generation. You look at the things that used to matter, 
through clouded vision. You don't see things as they are. You only see things in in the way that is what can help you the most. I think that centuries of rulership of of almost losing everything of remembering a past when the dwarves had so much I think it's I think it weighs heavy on the king and I think for him faith in Moradin is a tool to be used to control the people. To harness their faith, their devotion, and redirect it towards his own aims. I would say he's not a pious man at all. Hmm. Drake considers this. So you think there's no chance in this trying to convince him? I've been saying that since the beginning. I know. Just hearing more justification for your stance. Makes me think but about it some more. Being back in these lands, I... My heart, it, uh, it aches for these people. For I at least wish that they had the choice. But there, those who dwell on the surface are about to lose everything. Because if Brindle falls to the Red Hand, I guarantee that's when the gates are going to close. Let's hope the others found some other kind of information than we have an action plan. Because if there are others like you who don't want to see all they've worked for, gone, perhaps we have a chance to find allies in that. And Thank he you nods. for taking me here. Yeah. Uh, you're a good lad, Jert Bandon. And you've been through much. I listen and I watch. You continue to fight. But what are you fighting for? I've been asking myself that since I've come back. The reason I'm here is because the job is done. Because I can't leave these people to suffer. I don't know any of them, but... I also don't want them to be denied what was denied me. Fight so that... Whatever future is there for those that come after us. Is not a scarred wasteland, broken buildings, and the remnants of what was humanity and society. Fight so that perhaps others can have peace and what they call a normal life. Maybe one day I'll find those that I knew when I was younger. Perhaps not. But that was the first reason I fought. Now it's more than that. Good answer. It's a good answer. And as you guys are discussing this on the steps of the cathedral, uh, you hear a, a woman's voice say, Excuse me, are you Jert Bandon, member of the Claws of the Veil? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he does a... Uh... Like a turnaround thing, but it's only okay. part of his neck neck moves because the, the the stitches yeah. and everything. He just turns over. Mm. Okay. Who's asking? You see a pale uh, human woman with uh, violet eyes and uh, almost platinum white hair. She seems to be dressed in the clothes of a uh, mercenary or um, you know guardsman uh, sort of thing, and she says. Uh, well, I'll be. 
I didn't think that... I didn't think that this would bear any fruit. Uh, do you know where I could find uh, a minstrel by the name of Guy? He said to travel with your group. Ooh. Who are you? Just a messenger. They kind of raise their hands uh, as if to say, don't, don't, don't shoot, don't attack kind of thing. What's your message? Well, the message is from Jared. Uh, she's been looking everywhere, uh, apparently. Uh, Jared Nerth is the name. I know her. You can relay your message to me and I will ensure it gets to Guy. I'm going to roll a deception check. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Uh, she says, uh, all right, that's fair enough. As long as the message is delivered, I've done my, I've done my part. I've been sitting here for, feels like weeks, on the offhand chance that you might come through. Uh, she says, whoever still lives, you should make your way to Brindle as soon as possible. I don't know exactly what that means. Thank you for your services. Well, I guess my work is done. Uh, Tell then, no one you were here and that you were successful. She says, and, and who are you again? I don't know. What's your name? Sir, and I, he just smiles. I, I need to be getting on with my day. Uh, and they, they walk away from you. <laughs> smooth <laughs> very smooth <laughs> uh, he gives a knowing look to Umegs it seems the time we have is even shorter than we thought hmm. we should find the others All right. I'm just going to go on a little to uh, town walk with Umegs till we Regroup. Yeah. All right. So you guys regroup at a, um, let's say, a public park. Uh, it's nice and open. You'd be able to see if anybody sneak it up on you. It's uh, a bit like a stone's throw away from the cracked goblet, the uh, the tavern and inn where um, rooms have been secured. The, the finest rooms have been secured for you guys. And uh, we'll say that it is late afternoon heading into early evening by the time everybody finishes all their business. Um, so what is, uh, I guess everybody can drop, uh, lore on each other to catch each other up if that is the intent. Uh, yeah, I cast mm -hmm. level four lore dump <laughs> and give it to where I guess what the investigation team would figure that out. And considering the lack of time that we apparently have, that's why I think the, the caravan is the right choice. <laughs> so we go with the caravan, and we try to use both our words and the prospect of Brindle's gold to sway him to our side. Because clearly religion and, and vying for the better good is, as we've discovered, not going to be a viable strategy. We don't have time to gather all of the dwarfs under him. Oh, how do we find the damn thing? How do we find uh, a wagon that could have taken two routes through the veil and could have really been ambushed at question. any point? Wait, hold on. Uh, curses, curses on me! I I forgot I had a roleplay table for this. <laughs> okay, but you know, being able to see the map is cool too. Uh, but yeah, it's fine. We were yeah. playing paper dolls whenever you put up images. Oh, uh, okay, fair enough. Though, fair enough. though the backdrop actually is nice. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, how are, like, we're making a pretty big gamble on trying to find that wagon out in the Vale and hope that we pick the, you know, it'd be nice if it was on the way to Hillwatch. We could maybe meet up with Orion. There are only, only so many roads you can take with a caravan that large and of that size with that many guards that they would need to protect that value. That eliminates a lot going, of rough roads. Realistically, they're taking the south rather than the west. They have to know the Red Hand's approaching from the west at this point. It'd be folly to go that way. Maybe we shouldn't gamble all our efforts on this wagon idea. Then what's your other solution? I feel like the wagon would help us in 
are convincing of the king of Brindle once we get there. If we're I able just... to ensure his payment goes through, then that would be benefit for us, would it not? How much time will it take? There's no way to know how much time any of this will take. And we can't yep. afford to waste time on a gamble like this when we have to go to Brindle. So you want to just abandon the Hammerfest holds and the dwarves as now? I want to get things done as soon as possible. But I'm complaining that it's going to take a long time is going to get yeah. you there. So my only question about to... the caravan is how do we get them to ally to us? If we just show up and say, hey, we're also friends. Can we walk with you? Like, do we, or do we commandeer I mean, the whole thing? I, I, well, never hold mind. On. I think that we could pull that off. I feel like if we said we're the claws of the veil, they, they probably know. Like, you know, mm. maybe. I'm not saying we're a big deal, but like the people in Brindle know what we're up to. And I just, it seems like we have to go with the Hail Mary. I, we don't have the time to individually go from city to city with all these prospects so, that Meg told us about and convince them all one by one to abandon the king. I don't think we have time to do that. Yeah. Layla, with your powers, uh, do you have any capacity to send out a small animal familiar to seek the wagon before us? Or... I, I could send out multiples, but okay. they're, they're messengers, not... I, I could send out a familiar, I guess. I don't know. I can assist. Fly in the I... sky... Yeah, I mean, I don't know how far these roads are from each other, and if, like, there was, like, if we walked down the middle of them and you sent a bird down each, each path, like, I, I don't know what the width of these things are, so. Perhaps we split our efforts, then. Those of us that are capable of tracking go and try to find this caravan and scout its location before it arrives, while the others who are better at diplomacy remain here and talk to those who we can get to our side. Perhaps send someone with us to talk to the king, along with Brightcoin, and decide how to handle them. Whether or not we bring him any points to Umegs. Yeah, to be honest, I think it's less a matter of convincing the king and more a matter of maybe with this show, get, get on Brendel's good side and convince the people. Some of them. <sighs> because Umegs probably right. We're probably not going to break through to the king. But if we can convince any amount of the people with these acts. And it'd be faster than us going city to city. That is all our alternative. Is picking one, maybe two, of these holds. Perhaps we spread rumors. The idea that if the king was to turn down this coin, or even is planning on taking it, and then taking it below grounds, would inspire those that wish to fight for all that they have built into maybe thinking that their king would take the cowardly decision and thereby demand some kind of vote or a split. If our aim is to get as many allies from here as possible as quickly as possible, I don't know if we have the time to do anything more than that. But Other than letting itself point. tear itself apart. We don't want them to tear themselves into a civil war. That's what the Red Hand wants to keep them busy. Speaking of Red Hand, what if the war singers are influencing the king in some way? Most definitely. And we still I... have to root them out before we can really do anything. To those that are opposed to the idea of going off, what is your suggestions about what we do with our time? What do you, what does everyone individually think is the best use of our time here? Because yes, it's we shouldn't just arrive at Brindle the night before the army arrives. We will need time to get the city ready. But nor do we want to get there too early and sit about when we could have prepared better and gained more allies. Agreed. Um, I personally think that we need to make the best of our time. And I'm going to make put out a suggestion that we go to Hundlestone and we acquire a battle wagon so that we can traverse this land more expediently. <laughs> that pick ourselves up a Humvee. Yeah, <laughs> and and then then we go track down the gold wagon, and then we convoy it back here, and boom. 
Like vehicle combat well, sounds dope to me. Well, I a character. That's God a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I use the vehicle. I use the vehicle stuff from um, Avernus or whatever. There was a really good um, DM's Guild uh, release of basically non um, Mad Max motor, you know, hell motorcycle shit. It was like, what if we apply hell motorcycle shit to wagons? So I picked those up. Because um, I have another game I run where wagons kind of are important. But like, so yeah, I have the rules for uh, for battle wagons. If uh, That's sick. Yeah, if you guys are interested Jump in that. Between them. Well, I, I guess the main question is, do we wish to help the King of the Dwarves and his agenda? Or do we want to replace him with someone who will assist us against the red hand maybe we should start with that ideology before we kind of move out to some of these other things that would help those I do like the idea that if we route out the Red Hand within the Dwarven Kingdom, there might be some reciprocity due. And I know we keep saying, like, oh, it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. We're not going to convince the Dwarves. But, like, we said that about the Furbolgs and the Elves, and here we are, and, you know, Ghost Lord's not in the war anymore. We've done a lot of impossible things. Oh, I forgot to show you that when you looked at the portrait of, uh, of the King. This is the, the King of the Dwarves. It's a <laughs> Regal. Yeah, yeah, that's took the words out of my mouth. Regal AF. Personally, I would like to stay here, focus on ridding ourselves and the dwarves of the war singers. And hopefully it will carry us enough favor to go meet the king and try and convince him. Rather than run off, get a wagon, and then go for another wagon full of gold. All right, then, Lynn, your thoughts have been heard. Jared, yours? Uh, still, this may sound harsh. There are still two towns before Brindle. I think we have the time to try to gather at least another town or two here, to our side. To be with or against the king? Is it a matter of convincing his mind or convincing the towns against him, in your opinion? Enough of his people are convinced against him, he will have to change his mind. What will he? Rajar, your opinion? That question is the same for us. I'm sorry, what was, that, what was that last part? He said, "Will he?" And I said, "That question is that question is the same for either option." Oh, okay, okay. Also, I think oh, see, uh, guys, feeling sick, so he may not reply. Oh no! He said, "War singers." Okay, he typed in the chat. Yeah, he said he wants to go after war singers. And what of you, Rafina? What's your suggestion? Um. Well, you all are the. The heroes to root out the red hand so i will follow what major decisions you make but since you're asking for my counsel the one thing i was questioning is if brindle falls and the king will immediately close the borders we have seen that the red hand is capable of taking those that are not useful and killing them but those that are useful as slaves would it not be possible that the red hand could use the dwarves that are captured outside of the walls to figure out a way to get past their walls get past the stronghold that they would attempt to set up what's the saying fight fire with fire use yeah. dwarves versus I, dwarves i don't think that's for sure. i don't think you could convince the king to be afraid of that there no. he's headstrong think... about his defenses but here's the thing I think about the defenses. I think they're entirely foolhardy in assuming that the Red Hand will use conventional warfare methods to get into the, uh, them when the, they have proven many times that they have the ability to simply plane shift. And I feel that they probably could just show up in the Dwarven Hold if they really put their minds to it. And when you got tall walls and stuff, LOL teleportation and dragons, like... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, war singers, if they're inside the walls, they could find ways of getting the wall to come down. 
Right. With that being said. But to answer your question, I would say going after the caravan. If our longer term goal is Brindle, eventually we will have to meet with the royalty of Brindle. And if we are able to help them out with their supposed gambit, that would curry favor for us when we do go to meet them. Yeah. And kind of to elaborate, it's hard to see without the map, but like once we get that wagon, like we kind of start doing like the victory lap back into the dwarven settlements. Like we're going in, we're telling them like, yeah, the king's about to take this offering and like he'd be a coward not to like get everyone hyped on it. Like make a start dropping plunder as we go through towns with the wagon. All right. Just have from, to be very from the careful. wagon or can I, I put from the wagon? Together. Oh, okay. I agree. Thanlin and Rachel. I agree that we should be hopeful. You're, we're right. We have accomplished through things that we've been told we can't. But we can't get sloppy about it. I think we do need to bring the fight to the war singers. I think that will make a difference here. I think. I mean, we're talking about the walls just earlier and how the war singers are a problem. That a lot of it goes back to them. How do we get them out? How do we get them to face us? Is the wagon the answer to that? Is going to the holds the answer to that? What is the best way to dig them out? Because if we dig that venom out, is our best shot. Um, I have a practical idea, but probably not a feasible one, which is like if they the hobgoblins, hobgoblins are fey. If there are war singers here in disguise, if you touched them with cold iron, they would react to it. The question then just becomes, how do you convince an entire community to line up and touch cold iron? You don't. You don't do that. You can't. Especially if that idea is coming from outsiders. Right. Both of our options are wild goose chases, whether it's the caravan or finding the war singers. The caravan is at least a grand spectacle that would give them a lot Ooh. of concern about their plans being undone. I, I hear an idea. Oh, no, no. It's not an idea. I just saw the time. Um, We should probably take a break. So, because we do a break. And during that time, I guess, in what it seems like the two directions that you're really pulled in is routing out the Red Hand's presence here versus trying to intercept and possibly protect this uh, offering from Brindle to uh, the Hammerfest holds. So it seems to be the two directions mostly that you guys are kind of pushing in. So uh, let's do a quick break, uh, 10 minutes, and then we'll continue the discussion. But if you, you know, get back from break early and want to keep discussing, of course, OOC or in character, I mean, feel free. And I, I will be here to uh, do NPC input if you have imp if you need input from any of your NPCs. All right, so see you guys in ten. Everyone still here? I'm I'm here for right now. No, I'm still. Um, I'm getting yeah. some snacks, but I'm here-ish. So thoughts, opinion. I think that one thing that po sticks out in my mind, even though I'm arguing for a gold cart, um, gold cart could be misinformation. It could be a lie that's been supplanted by the war singers to distract us and get us out of here. Um, that's my only thought. Um, I still think gold cart is. I want to say it's my idea like that, like, or not my idea, but like I want to do it because I think it's like the five star solution to this area. Um, it, like it kind of leads into everything else, but it also might be a red herring that burns up all of our time. And we also might go out into the veil and not find it. It, you know, a number of things could happen. It could have already been ambushed. Um, yeah, a... it, it would have to go through either Doth or Hillwatch. And right. I mean, both it... of those areas are already under some sort of. Uh, red hand pressure or red hand influence pressure so we don't even know if the cart's gonna make it through those areas and it seemed even continue. if we do bring the cart back we're still gonna have to deal with the war singers one way or another 
well, might yeah. as well dip the middleman and just the, the 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 problem with that is that we need to be very careful about how we take out the war singers because if they are disguising themselves as dwarven citizens and officials like I, openly attacking them in even slightly the wrong way is going to completely undo everything we're trying to achieve here um you know it's like like this is a extremely po this is a political war and i think that we need to take political approaches and just like i i i i be i'm willing to join whatever plan we come up with but i we we need like a really good plan for digging out the war singers if we're about to go like you know taking uh prisoners and you know accusing high level members of dwarven society uh, i'm just worried about the clock you're right you're you're right to be worried about it we don't know how much time we have left and... and and i would love to shoot right past brindle and go up to witch cross but i and i don't expect we're gonna have time for that either um my my middle ground is i'm totally down to do the war singer plan i still want a battle wagon <laughs> maybe that's a reward that we get for when we leave this place honestly could be possibly but um you yeah, know i i only um can anyone know, um, dispel magic yeah i have it prepared but like that's a it's not a cheap spell you know like you're, you're, you're we're not gonna be able to dispel magic on every person in town um, i know i know it's just but yeah no it's good it's good for when we feel like we have like a 95 percent assurance that we can just like you know pull the cloth off you know pull the cloth off the uh or the skies off well hopefully and... that doesn't mean all the rest of the china falls off the table when we do that since the red Wait. hand is heavily organized as a military unit the other thing we need to consider too is that, and he said this to us outright, is that there's just like a really strong chance that they have paid informants, and that there are dwarves that are actively working for the Red Hand, and like there's a strong chance that like we could call someone out who is just a normal ass person who's working for them, and then like we end up in that situation of like they're a war singer, no they're not, we've lost all of our credibility all of a sudden. Yeah, we have to play it like super careful because again Which, we're a bunch of outsiders in a dwarven <laughs> society like if we exactly. start we start accusing them of, of, of stuff and we're not right on it then yeah we're, we're pretty boned which is why i think that we if going again i'm not saying we should need to do this but if we go for the wagon and we come back and we start making this big to do about how we are about to like unite the veil like the war singers are going to respond to that they're going to try to stop us from getting to the king yeah and that will that will pull them out in a way that assures us that we can isolate them and you know know that we're these are our enemies and make a big spectacle out of it. And like I was kind of saying, like if we're able to help that wagon at least get here, and you know that information gets back to Brindle, that's that's a plus in you know the claws book that they were assisting Brindle even when we I weren't exactly there. Absolutely. And like, I think it's important to acknowledge like the value of what this wagon of gold represents and what the mechanically it will do later in the game if we don't secure it. It means that there's going to be traders within the final battle, probably. I mean, they, can, right. they, can, they can purchase go back to the world map then to see how far more, how far of a distance we will have to travel. Well, here's a, here's another big plus. Uh, this is again a hail mary, but I think like story works in uh, matters of such. Uh, what if we ended up like we go towards Hillwatch? You know, we get the cart, we meet up with Orion. That would be like a really nice, resounding way to just like patch this story back together. The group's all back, and now we're gonna fix finish off the dwarves and head to brindle kind of thing you know well the, the one thing i the one thing i want to say is i think with the amount of time that's passed i don't know if orion would have gotten down to hill watch at this point i think he probably would be yeah i mean if he's still alive uh he would be wrapping up what's happening at red rock i mean so crash can correct me if i'm wrong but it would probably take some time to get down there it's 76 miles to doth and over 100 to Prosser. We're talking um, 
that we 90 miles we did in three days, but we didn't have jerk, so he, we're going to get like 20% better uh, movement time with jerk. He's also under the raised that sickness so that doesn't get rid of his uh um, inherent abilities you know he still rolls a 10 <laughs> um, yeah but it'll be um it'll be a minus four to order bonus he applies to the plus to the 10 right sure. um, so it was still might be low regardless you're right you're right but uh it's you know i think that i don't think that takes away our forced march ability though which is the important thing you know anyone else can make those survival checks we have two druids as much as i uh disparaged them the other day i do believe in them <laughs> ah you remember I, that we're still here <laughs> i just i was just real sad about jert i just no, wanted no, him to feel, i wanted fair. him to feel special and if we do go to either locations we're gonna have to deal with the problems at those locations uh yeah do you not want to kill a horde of werewolves I I don't want any more problems thrown at us when we're already trying to deal with a civil war with dwarves. We're not going to get too mixed up in it. We're just going to kill a healthy amount of werewolves. Maybe, maybe if the, the primary lichen shows up, we'll take care of him. Well, but like, unless you know... <laughs> can guarantee that, I'm not accepting that. So... <laughs> But, I, like, it does also, I, I mean, I don't know how these werewolves work, but, like, it's kind of in line with, like, the whole Bloodlord idea of, like, these things could accidentally infect people with something that we don't want in the veil. So, like, getting rid of them is a good thing. I was a little, I was more concerned on that from the Skull Jester thing. Because if, yeah. you know, if that spreads, oh, there's a that's going to be, yeah, that's going to be, yeah. It seems like the Red Hand wants to play Chemical Warfare. Okay. What happened? Yeah, um, I'm not like that worried about that disease. I mean, I, I, I'll, I'm sure I'll eat those words later, but uh, you know, as long as it's not as virulent as Ghost Lord magic, we could, we, you know, with enough paladins, and anything is fixable. <laughs> with enough paladins, <laughs> have you well, ordered your paladin shot today? <laughs> Stanley's mind isn't changing about this, but and I respect that. All right, I'm going to step off. I'll be right back. Same.
All right. We got everybody back. I'm back. Yeah, hey, buddy. I'm back. Okay. You are back. That's good. So, um, yeah, we resume uh, from our break. Heard some pretty good arguments one way or the other. What um, what you guys do next, I will I will try to respect um, and and run it. But we will likely not be I likely not want to support a split party unless it's a very passionate argument for for both sides is, is made and it's an it's an even split. Um, but you guys will need to kind of decide uh, what your next move is. The campaign timer is real um and as you can see from the map like towns are falling the red hand is advancing so um there's much to do but you can't do everything and so you have you, your actions do um do carry weight and consequence and value all right so um I am here to represent all the NPCs that travel with you uh, and that you have, you know, kind of uh, pulled to your cause. And it really just comes down to if you if you need them for anything, um, let me know. If and possible, I, yeah. could we ask Umeg's opinion between the two choices? Okay. Umeg, who's been giving his opinion since the first day you met him? Uh, yeah, well, his opinion, his opinion has always been not to help them, but now he only has the option too, which is a matter of how, right? Oh, if you're only yeah, if you put it to him that way, that he has to choose um, between the two, he would say that Barnabas's plan is sound because if the gold does make it, it does show a tremendous um, deference from Brindle, and it is appealing to the king's love of money and gold. Um, and knowing that it is a valuable commodity and bargaining chip, um, if the red hand is as informed as the random people you've talked to in this town are, they are going to be after it and they are going to try and stop it from arriving. So y you would essentially be drawing them out by, uh, by having it. That's that's his that's his stance between the two. Mm -hmm. I like that. He says there's there's four holds, and if they've got war singers in every hold, how are we supposed to route them out of every hold? Yeah, make them come to us. If you have rats, you don't try and run around and catch the rats. You put out bait and a rat trap. Cotton balls covered in peanut butter. Oof, oof, oh. that's so so inhumane. Oh my gosh, but and then um, dealt but with rats. I've, I've I've dealt with mice and rats. Uh, <laughs> my my heart hardened very quickly um, when I uh, when I had to deal with them in my own home for sure. So, um, not this home, but a previous place where I lived. Um, all right. From well, beyond the veil, Orion is very sad. Oh, <laughs> oh no. I had a pet mouse. If that makes you feel any better. But him died, and then I got I was very sad. So. And I had pet rats, but they died also, and I was very sad. So. But man, rats, ugh, if they could genetically alter them to have like a long lifespan, that's a good ass pet right there. the The problem is they only live about two or three years, so that's Oof. that's that's some rough shit. That's some that's some military kid simulation right there. Oh God. <laughs> Do you love this thing? Do you think it's great? Does it bring you joy? You can enjoy it for two to three years, and it'll be taken away from you forever. Yeah. Sorry, I I'm dealing with stuff. Anyways, <laughs> no. yeah. I apologize for getting too gruesome. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh anyways, um, yeah. Uh, do you guys want to stay on this map for planning purposes? Well, after Umed's um, mm. thoughts, maybe Thalen is slowly shifting his mind to the wagon. 
I'll throw up uh, to the yeah, west. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. And now that I'm looking right. at it, while there is two routes, they do both funnel into the same road, which is, like, if we leave out of Hundlestone, like, there's a decent chance we encounter them somewhere between here and there, if we're lucky, if we're really lucky. Unlikely, but lucky. I still vote Hill Watch. Yeah, but they wouldn't go that way. They, they like, they would obviously take, go south at Doth to avoid going towards the Red Hand. If they're smart for that. I, I have to imagine the king would send their, their smartest vassals to with the, with this immense amount of gold. I really hope so, or maybe Brindle's not worth saving. <laughs> I mean, if Brindle falls, everything else might as well fall with it. So, let's hope that they're, you know, they have a head on their shoulders and they thought about the route that they were going to send this cart on. And my vote is that we go to the intersection. If we don't find it, then I vote that we go east towards Hill Watch and with the hopes of reuniting with Orion. Mm. All right, I have posted I the see poll. Orion. I thought I posted the poll. Oh, there it is. Okay. If we see Orion, he has like 20 red hand skulls attached to his claws. <laughs> well, if, if, if Orion went to Red Rock uh, from the Witchwood, it's not honestly that far for him to go from Red Rock to, to Hill Watch. Um, same as you guys going from the Witchwood to the Thorn Waste to Kern Dural, you know? Like. Especially since he has access to fly, flying mounts and whatnot, and, uh, or at least they did to get to you know, and druid magics and, and whatnot to get to Red Rock. So it's not it's not unbelievable to say that uh, Orion could could be returned to the party at this point with relative ease. So I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave that up to you, uh, the player of Orion, to decide when is a good time for him to be returned. Um. No, let me actually. I think I did put my vote in. Um. <laughs> now I just have the, the 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 image of them hooking up a bunch of giant owls to Claude, so they can helicopter his ass <laughs> across the veil. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Um. Oh man, I would. Do a wisdom save for Ryan. Uh, I'm assuming he's probably heard some rumor of what's going down in Hillwatch, and if he would. Oh yeah, you knew after... about that initially. You initially you were going to go back to Hillwatch to check on them. Yeah. After after your murder spree, uh, and then you you opted to turn back around. Like you were you were heading out past the uh, the farmlands of Drellin's Ferry, kind of blazing a trail towards the Golden Plains, and we're like, nah. I'm I'm not ready to go home. And you turned around and rejoined the party. Yeah, and then helped them with the, with the fens. Um, after, well, okay, maybe I should I should ask you afterwards because I don't okay. know what has occurred at Red Rock for him. Sure. So maybe we can handle like a quick roll of that off screen mm -hmm. or something. Of course. But okay. otherwise, it would come down to him having like a wisdom save of like, okay. If he really feels like his family needs assistance, then he would definitely go down there. Or if he will stick to his guns and uh, wait at Brindle for everyone. Mm, he's a fan spo. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. If it gets him to Hillwatch, 100% use it. Uh, I would think it'd probably be a low roll for, for him to go to Hillwatch. I mean, two dice or two dice. Well, All right, it looks watch. like we've got four votes for heading towards Hill Watch. All right, so that would take you, um, if you follow the roads, to Hundlestone, past the entrance to Val Hinderlin, and then into, um, you know, this this valley area, crossroads, so on and so forth. So let right. me once we get to the crossroads, I could. Send some animals, familiars, mm -hmm. at least have them check the Douth roads while we head to Hillwatch. Good call, Just to Make sure we aren't missing it. Okay. It's only, you know, roughly nine, ten miles uh, to get to Hundlestone, which is as of nothing to your, um, to your ranger. 
but let me uh, let me get the travel calculator out just in case. All right. Yeah. So. Oh wow. Yeah. Um, Jert, if you're feeling up to it, um, you you have your your force march ability. Yeah. Um, oh, it's yeah. not so, it's not so much about difficult terrain getting in the way because you are on well maintained dwarven roads. Um, at a normal base, it would only take it would take less than half a day to go from Kern, uh, Kern Dural to Val Hinderlin. Um, for uh, you doing a forced fast pace, uh, they could get there in about two and a half hours. Okay. Yeah. What are we looking at in terms of? Well, but, it's two I mean, and a half hours already, from here to You've here, already right? secured like the nicest, uh, <laughs> the nicest uh, rooms in town in in, in Kern Dural. Did you? Oh, we can stay at one night, and you know. Uh, okay, okay, okay. All right. Yeah. You get one night of uh, sleep, and then straight to Hill Watch. Well, if this is two and a half hours, right? Yeah. Then what's this? Oh, if you if you if you fly, or if you if, if we you... just go along the road here. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. And maybe with a battle wagon, uh, we're gonna see prices. We're gonna get, get quotes. Second so force marchers for eleven hours. Maybe I didn't do the measurements right, but I... Oh, shit. I might not have done the measurements right. Hold on. Yeah, it looks a lot further away than nine and a half miles. I'm so dumb. Um, They're 30 miles apart. My bad. Isn't, yeah, that's like a whole day. Yeah. So, with you force marching everybody, they can get there in about seven seven hours and change. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. So, then you would make it to Hundlestone. Then from Hundlestone, I was looking at the... Uh, first number, not the second number. Second number tells me the cumulative, uh, distance. Now, to this crossroad right here is 55 miles of road. So, to get right here. And who knows? Maybe by that point, you'll run into it, uh, or signs of it, or whatever, and you won't have to choose, uh, Douth or Hillwatch. Alright, awesome. Alright. And then 55 miles ends up being, for fast uh, pace, about a day and a half. So it'd be one day of, of camping out on the road, uh, essentially, to get to those crossroads. All right. But if you right. do it if you do it all natural, you don't lose your natty 20, your on-tap natty 20. You only lose that if you do um, campfire again, essentially. All right. Oh. oh. And that 20 oh. might come in clutch. Yeah. <laughs> and they and they never use campfire again for the rest of the campaign. Uh, uh, were we <laughs> able to get a quote on a battle wagon when we passed through Hundlestone? Uh, is it, yes. Is it feasible for us to purchase one of these things? I have no idea what it costs. Okay. Let me get let me get the wagons open. Carts and wagons. And you want you want the big boy, the battle wagons. You don't you don't want any of that baby shit. You want the ah. you want the, you want the big dick stuff. All right. I mean, I would it. like to know. I, I I'm not gonna. <laughs> I hope I can afford it. So yeah, you head out head down to ye old medieval uh, car dealership, uh, and he's slapping the hood of some very you know respectable looking uh, wagons or whatever. But uh, Barnabas, it's real hard. It's real hard to have uh, your sights set on that when you can see. Across the lot, the wagon fort. <laughs> <laughs> the wagon fort is a huge lumbering structure on wheels, uh, and it's drawn by a herd of beasts. It's made of metal and wood, and has four ballista on its parapets. What? Um, it is built to barrel through enemy lines and deliver devastation. A wagon fort can easily carry 40 troops and has provisions. Oh uh, <laughs> it has provisions uh, to 15 um, as an encampment. So you could stuff it with 40 people or 15 people, which sounds like an adventuring party plus <laughs> uh, their B team and companion animals and such, uh, could use as a mobile home. How much? And, He's willing to let it go today. Two thousand five hundred gold. Oh my God! It. Sold. You, you drive oh, it right off the lot. Oh. Hold no. on. It's a group decision. You can't make this choice with one person. But Barnabas is our finance. I mean, now. I, 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 I don't see a problem with this. Dirt, you're bad with money, okay? Anyone what? else? Whoa, 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 whoa! Who's bad with money? I've never bought anything with my money, actually. There you go. Never mind. Dan 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 Thanlin has shown some pretty loose uh, group community resource ab uh, sharing abilities. Excuse me? <laughs> Excuse me? Every fan spell ever. Mm -hmm. 
that's but what fan, fans, go, fans for aren't money though fans for aren't money they're more valuable than money i've had group decision okay you guys now, how, how much pay. gold to buy a fans book <laughs> <laughs> there is no such thing no such thing how about a level oh, oh sorry, my wrong god edition. yeah oh that's uh, a slippery slope um, all right. I mean, I will <laughs> recite the dialogue of Shrek to you for a fanspo. Well, oh, no. well by that, the wagon. That would not be fanspo. Uh, I, I'm right. totally open to a poll if you guys want to vote on the battle wagon. We're getting a wagon. Barnabas, you win. Uh, oh, wow. I'll say, you, yes. you want to hear about the model below the uh, Sure, I'll hear about it. For do it. do okay. we really need four ballista? Yes. <laughs> We're going into a war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to buy the big one. I just want to know. Okay, well, the assault wagon... Uh, oh, sorry. Below Wagon Fort is the Wheelhouse, which is just a fantasy uh, mobile home. A wheelhouse is designed with long-term living in mind. Wheelhouses are the largest kind of wagon, except for the Wagon Fort, um, and likely the largest land vehicle uh, that you're going to encounter besides the Wagon Fort. Um, inside, they contain all the amenities necessary to living with the dual-purpose furnishings uh, based on uh, what the owner's needs are. Um, and then... One side of it uh, sort of opens up uh, and has like a little awning and all that jazz so that you can um, here. Here's a picture of of one. I don't think I actually have art of a wagon for it, which is a damn shame. Uh, but here's it. That's cute. Yeah. Here's it like unfolded, you know, like ready to go. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Um, and then below that is the assault. wagon. It cooked with a ballista. <laughs> And troop transport compartment. An assault wagon is designed for rapid deployment of soldiers behind enemy lines. Assault wagons rely on riveted metal strapping over a wooden structure for defense. And half a dozen beasts. That's half a dozen beasts. By the way, the cost of the herd that pulls the wagon mm -hmm. fort is not included in the, okay. in the cost. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, wagons typically have... Uh, so, so, I'm doing the wrong part. Okay. Um, assault wagons. Uh, rare... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, assault wagons are also effective at striking enemies on the move, as they are equipped with a small ballista on top. And that would set you back 900 gold. Very reasonable. Mm -hmm. But I... Uh, just <laughs> the, creature out the creature capacity of an assault wagon is 10. You know, comfortably. Yeah. Um, you, you could stuff people in there, sure. But yeah. Yeah. Once we have Claude oh. back, that's not going to quite do it. Yeah, if the if the if the statistics help, I'll go ahead. You know what? I'll post the stat blocks into uh into chat so you guys have a better sense of. So we have like an extra just th like three grand in gold sitting, but we have like a lot of treasure. It, it was it is it reasonable that at some point in the dwarven holds I can liquidate our treasure holdings? Uh yeah, you are literally at a um in Hundlestone is a, a hub of commerce. Yeah, so he would liquidate the treasure that we don't need, and we have, like, 5,000 gold. I don't see any reason why we shouldn't buy the, the big wagon. Like, we haven't spent money on, like, anything. It's an investment for... Our... Do you see how many draft animals you need? 22. I'm, look I'm looking for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. How much? I think, I, think I can still afford that. What, how much is 22 draft animals? Uh, That's a lot they're... of creatures that get murked in the middle of the <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's still a fort once it stops moving. All right, let me see. Oxen, I believe, are only like a couple of gold apiece. Oh, if you yeah. Just go with was... oxen. Oh, yeah. Let's see. But, like, we're going to have to get these oxen some armor, or at least the front one. <laughs> Plus, yeah, if you're starting to include back. barding, that's going to be pretty expensive. We're not going to worry about that right now. <laughs> when we get that that's Orion that's clause. once we get a giant wagon full of gold, we'll start to worry about such uh, aspirations. Mm. Yeah, okay, okay, sorry. One ox is 15 gold. Okay, that's still not too bad. That's like thir 300 gold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Let's see, 22 times 15. All right, wait. I missed. 330 gold, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is, is there like a daily food cost for this thing? Uh, to keep to keep oxen well fed, um, yeah, I mean it's it's not going to break the bank, but yeah, you're going to need to buy f uh, feed and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. This seems extravagant and unnecessary. 
It is. I love it. But that's the kind We're of going to lose it within a week. You know that, right? Hey, this whole land might not be here in a week. If you could keep it, right? I will say this. I'm not trying to assume the role of the used car salesman, but um, because it provides living quarters, um, you guys would be gaining well-rested buff every time you sleep. Because oh, these would be, these that would be, this would be a traveling sanctuary? Uh, essentially, yeah. That's worth it alone without the ballista. Mm. And is that for our Then why only? don't we just buy the one that doesn't have the ballista? Because it's, it's not cool. Ballista. It's a ballista. <laughs> it's not you cool. Shoot things from me. So wait, does that apply to both the wagon fort and the assault wagon, or just the? Fort? No, the wagon fort specifically has uh, the the feature there of, of the the Protecting. living quarters. Okay. Yeah. Uh, traveling sanctuary. I say we go with the fort. It's more, you know, bigger, better ballista. We're in a war. Man, none of my characters would suggest this, but if we were able to get Gomek to pull the fort. <laughs> now, the wheelhouse does provide living quarters as well. Um, I could post up that information, too. If that helps. Uh, I mean, I know there's design. magic shops in Brindle, but, like, what do we really expect to be able to buy with 5,000 gold? Like, when it comes to magic, we couldn't even afford the Amulet of Shielding, which, no offense, like, I personally don't see that as a great magic item, and it, it was, like, 7,000 gold. Well, if we fight f flying creatures, we're going to need some way to fly. Need some way to what? Some way to fly. Or maybe four ballista mounted on our badass... Uh, <laughs> You know, wagon for it. Anti-air fire? Yeah. I'm not against it. Let's buy it. Yeah. I, 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 I'll, I'm I'm gonna throw it. It, I'll throw it into... Uh, I'll, I'll make a poll. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Is there really a poll where we all know what we're getting? <laughs> the cheap and affordable one, I think, is probably the wheelhouse. But the wagon for it sounds badass. I just don't see what else we're going to spend the money on. Like, other than more health potions, which we can still afford. Sims and Fancy are back. This is pretty up there. It's less than 3,000 oh, gold for the biggest one. Yeah, I, I, that's... It's just fortuitous. It's serendipitous. How many D&D party can say they bought a wagon for it and right. actually kept it? Yeah. Come on, guys. Mm. By the way, this is Charcy saying this. Thanlin, hmm... My my one concern is that <laughs> those those animals are gonna die real quick. <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. I'll get more. They're okay, only fifteen well, gold apiece. <laughs> Before we, have... we, so one thing to consider also, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Before we finalize our votes here, this might change all of your minds. Uh, this will significantly slow our travel time. Oh well, is it super it can, slow? It can, it can only move twenty feet. Oh. Wait, what? Uh, fort one? Yeah, it says 20 feet by 15 feet, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. I think that's the size. No, 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 that's the physical dimensions of it. Is oh, speed, speed, hold on. Speed, land speed, speed of, yeah. draft, of, draft of draft animals. animals. Or halving okay. other speed. Yep. Okay, alright, then it's faster. Which is the same for pretty much everything else, but I mean, with Jert's force movement, does that factor in? He can use it on the animals, and while we rest... Uh, is there an upward limit to how many people you can affect with your ability? Oh, hold on, let me pull it up right now. <laughs> I'm just it's saying. The, it's the 22 ox now. Alright, let's see. Alright, so this combination of two things. So this one... And then... A uh, Force Marcher. Let me pull up the actual text from the Google Drive document. Mm. Well, it's that cool. asterisk on party. That's... Yeah, that's why I'm looking at the actual yeah. document right now. Stand by. Because we did the same with the 1D4 expertise. We changed it to uh, advantage. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to see what the original text says right now. So all these options are BT members, right? Right? <laughs> Probably Ranger. just the herd of oxen. <laughs> I'm just going to mention uh, when we had our 
a luxury spa, a hotel downtime. Mm -hmm. um, I think Layla probably, I mean, we don't have to do it on screen, she probably um, had another uh, get-together chat to come up with how you doing, how things progressing uh, with, with Miss Sasha. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean... Asking her for follow-ups to the last time they talked on the roof. It's been so long. Yeah, I mean, she's happy that you are uh, opening up an engaging conversation with her. Um, and she just kind of tells you that her, her worries and troubles are are nothing um, compared to what you have endured. And kind of wants to turn the conversation back on you and what you need and what you're doing moving forward. Oh, I definitely continue to try to turn it back onto her, and I want uh, answers uh, to the okay. questions about the things that I asked you several weeks ago that you were supposed to figure out about yourself. <laughs> it just says I can travel for... You can travel an additional number of hours equal to your proficiency bonus before needing to make a constitution saving throw for Force March. So it seems there's no limit to how many things you can affect. Hmm? Okay. Ah, uh, homebrew. I, uh, I feel, I feel <laughs> like they didn't... Five e. Yeah, they didn't like think through like what what happens when you know you're traveling with an army. Does one ranger make an entire army able to uh, to do that? Um, Man, this ain't powerful. I mean, I mean, isn't yeah. that what it, how everyone did it? <clears throat> uh, yeah. Um, showed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so well, actually, actually, oh god. <laughs> This other game I'm playing specifically states exactly how many individuals each of your special skill feats can affect based on what level of skill you have. Uh -huh. And that sounds like a lot of text to read. <laughs> it's, it's really not. It's, it's, it's really it's really not too bad. I'd rather read text than have to like make shit up on the fly like I'm having to do right now. Um, I would say that for now, um, it would be it would be um, believable that you could. Uh, gain the benefits of fast travel as you are currently doing but i would say that these animals are carrying such a tremendous burden that um beyond uh if you if you wanted to travel longer than eight hours um you would you know beyond that they would start having to make saves and i would have all the oxen make saves as one uh one unit essentially um and you know like they would gain exhaustion as a as a herd, essentially, um, pulling your stuff. So, um, as long as you're okay with saying, uh, we traveled for eight hours and we get to use the fast travel results, um, that's fine. But um, if you want any more than that, it's just going to be too many things for Jert to be um, motivating and keeping track of. Does that work as a decent compromise? Yeah, I mean, you're, yeah, yeah. You're gaining the ability. You just can't push. You can't. You just can't push past it. Um, whereas if you guys are traveling together, you have seen instances where you've made people force march for you know, 11, 12, 13, 14 hours. Um, you know, trying to get as much distance as possible. Uh, all right. So, is uh, it looks like the results are in. You are purchasing a wagon for it. <clears throat> Wonderful. Excited halfling noises. All right. <laughs> Let me see. We're I have to lose it. <laughs> Aw. I'm ready for it. Now, the one thing is that we will have to travel by roads when we use this thing. I don't think this thing has off-road capabilities as much. No, yeah, it's definitely going to need to... Whenever possible, it's going to need to stay on roads. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Okay. Um, let's see. Where did I stash the wagons at? All right, well, while I'm finding those, uh, you guys should make any final preparations. Um, I'm assuming you spend the night in Hammerfest Hold as well. Or not Hammerfest Hold, in Hundlestone, after securing your purchase and doing all that. Um, you know, it took you a whole day to travel from Kern Dural to Hundlestone, or, or a little less than a day. You show up, you immediately go to the wagon uh, dealer, um, you have your used car salesman moment. Uh, you're the proud owner of it, and you spend the night reading the owner's manual, and I don't know, naming all 22 of your oxen, and then oh, in the morning, and then in the morning, you're gonna head out from Hundlestone uh, to the crossroads. Does that sound correct? Yeah. Um, all right. Since we're resting here, can I carouse? 
<laughs> if you want, do you want to carouse? Oh, Look, boy. I want to All roll right. that number. All right. I'll get the carousal tables out. Might be fun to blow off some steam. Before I do, I want to take off my um, lawn sword, shield, and armor and give it all to Barnabas, mm -hmm. just in case. Mm -hmm. Sure. What? Sure. What if, what if you I get mean, in trouble? Who, who carouses in their armor? That that doesn't sound fun. Yeah, we're <laughs> here to have fun, right? Yep, uh... you're, you're here for a short time, not a long time. I definitely believe that. All right. Um, all right, so, sure. I mean, anytime you're in a settlement, you could uh, state that you are carousing. Does anyone join Thanlin on his carou on, his night of carousals? It's dwarves. This could be your last night in a decent uh, civilization. I'm tempted. I think I'll join him. Yes. Okay. Oh, no. Jert, you, you just died. Come on. <laughs> uh, all right. Yes. Layla? <laughs> Ronzo's muted. Oh, he must have stepped away. Uh, yeah, sorry, I was still stuffed the dog. Okay, so I got Thanlin. Who else is going? What was the question? Uh, Thanlin, Thanlin wants to go carousing. He wants to know if anyone <laughs> wants to go carousing with him that uh, in this last night in civilization. Jert's sure going. Yep, no, Barnabas too. Okay, Jert's going. Barnabas is going. Okay. I continue my... Uh... Soloism slash maybe an hour of Sasha bonding. Okay. Uh, Raid Riar, I think we just do some knitting. I don't. Is they, Raid Riar with us or do they have to bow out from sick? I think he's listening in. Oh, okay, okay. I I think I I feel like his carousal times are probably in the past. So <laughs> would, would we need uh, a carouse? Can we take Raijon out with us? Oh right, yeah, of course. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> he's ready to what happened. I He's think... ready to carouse. Oh god, I feel like the someone, guy's has, ready. someone has to be responsible and watch these guys. I think Ray would... <sighs> mm, fuck. Mm. Well, all... there's a difference between tagging along yeah. and actually carousing. Ah, uh, fine. She'll carouse. Okay. Yes. But before that, she's going uh -huh. to drop a 5th level spell slot onto Jert and cast Greater Restoration on him to get rid of one of his uh, sicknesses. Does it work for um, it says death sickness? It says anything that's reducing a target's ability score. The, well, that's ability that's score. That's only ability checks. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Damn. Thank you for trying, but yeah. I think only time will help this. All right. I'm beginning to feel better and, already. And because out of character, nice. it's fun. Uh, I'll say that Lily gets guilt tripped by the rest of the party going to go to. Oh man! Nice. Okay. Because nice. so, you know it's fun out of character to do this stuff. Uh, uh, but she'll drag <laughs> Sasha along. She's like, oh, she sure. Will exclude it. All right. Does anyone else in our B team want to go? Jocelyn wants to go. Jane's going to go. Teams. So pretty All much right. everyone. <laughs> Umeg. Except for old Umeg. man Rachel. Uh, uh, Umeg's not going to go carousing. Oh my gosh. Umeg, Ridiculous. please watch the fort. Uh. All right. So Ray, are you going or are you staying? Uh, Ray will go. All right. Are you gonna carouse or are you just gonna yeah, hang we'll out? Oh, carouse. oh wow. Okay. Yeah. All I feel right. like that's really appropriate for her because she's like getting that human experience kind of deal. Yeah. Gerard and Minette are too excited about the wagon to go carousing. They're actually that's... gonna be yeah. They're actually gonna be making uh, renovations and plans to try and get the kitchen area up to standard. So nice. All right. All right. Well, here we go. One last day of happy times before we all die. Well, yeah. um, all right. So if you are carousing, uh, go ahead and throw. Oh, I'm going to clear the chat real quick. Go ahead and roll a D hundy. Here we go. I'm rolling a D hundy for me and Ooh. Sasha's collective carousing together. Oh, OK. Uh, Gina will roll her own carousing. Okay. All right, Barnabas starting with a high number, spicy, spicy. Okay. Um, well, let me change out the music, I guess. Hold on. Mm -mm. 
let's see. Mm. Wow. You type in you type in rowdy and you just get combat music. How sad. Uh let's see. Oh, I know what to do. Hold on. Mm -hmm. I'll just go with this. This will work. Okay. So, uh, Barnabas with a 97 on the carousal table. Uh oh no. Uh-oh. All right. Uh you wind up outside of town, far from your allies and the settlement. Um in fact, uh you wake up inside a witch's hut. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Fuck. Uh her cauldron has been upended. And it looks as though much of the contents of the cauldron have been drunk. Uh, give me a D6. Uh. I hope it's the one that's our friend. Oh, fuck. Right. Okay. That's like you the know other side of the veil. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, you feel pleasantly warm and cozy. Um, looking around the hut, um, you don't see anyone, but you hear uh, some humming coming from outside as you kind of peer out the window you see um a woman question mark uh about nine feet tall hunched over uh with a, a bit of a hunched back her long bony arms uh end in long spidery fingers and she seems to be tending to her garden uh you could tell that this is not a human at all but some sort of uh, creature. Uh, you don't remember how you got here, why you're inside her house, or if she's aware of you. What do you do? Do I know what a hag is? Uh, you may give me a uh, knowledge nature. Okay. So sorry. You are pretty confident that this is a hag. This is not good. I I have my ring, right? It could Still. be a div. It could be a difficult sight, uh, fight to uh, solo if you had to. Right. Um. But I have my I have my belongings generally. Oh yeah, you have all your stuff. Okay. Okay. Um. Then I will. I'm just gonna walk. Well, yeah. I I I'm getting. Is like is a vibe trek appropriate? Like, is this a scary witch hut? Like, you know, there's a. There's oh a yeah, yeah, yeah. Spectrum. So the the vibe check is pretty easy. It's a very spooky hut. Um, yeah. Entrails, half taxidermied animals, uh -huh. uh, human remains hang from mm -hmm. uh, meat hooks. Mm -hmm. uh, the place smells of death, and decay, and the promise of worse things to come. Okay. Um, that's not good. I'm gonna try to leave, and I guess um. I'm gonna try to like stealth out of here. I'm just trying to think if there's anything I can do that will actually make me pass a stealth check, which is not my forte. Mm. Um, but it doesn't really look like it. It might be shit out of luck. I maybe just wanna, you know, there's like no way you get into a witch's hut without her knowing about it. So I'm just gonna walk boldly out the front door. I'm gonna say hi. And how did I get here? Oh, okay. All right, what a flex. All right, so as you head out, uh, and you say, hey, how did I get here? Uh, the hag turns slowly, uh, looming over you. She is hideous to behold, her face covered in um, pockmarks, warts, wrinkles, and um, just discolorations from a lifetime spent uh, concocting brews in her cauldron, being too close to fire, and, and generally a dangerous, dangerous life. Um, she stares at you and she says uh what are you and what are you doing here oh man i really hoped you were gonna be able to answer this like uh this is clearly a misunderstanding and i think it'd be benefit us both if we just went our separate ways and chalk this up to random fate all right give me a give me a persuasion 
<laughs> the balls on Barnabas. <laughs> Wait, that wasn't a persuasion. That was perception. Sorry. Okay. Um, persuasion. Oh wow. Okay. She says, um, "Yes, perhaps that's best. I don't feel like dealing with whatever it is you are." Trust me, the feeling is mutual. And All right. I go about my merry way. I, I pull out my cartographer's kit. I try to get my bearings and make my way back to town. Okay. Um, as you as you start moving, your hair uh, keeps going in your eyes, uh, making it very hard to see. But I keep my hair very short. I know. And that is when you start to realize, as you go to brush it away, that all of your... Your, your arm, you can't see it. It's just hair. Huh? <laughs> What's going on? Uh, I run to a river and stare at the <laughs> reflection. Okay. Um, you are growing long, long hair from, like, every follicle of your body. I'm a little Sasquatch? Uh, it's more hair than that. You're like, you kind of got this vibe going on. That's exactly what I was looking up. <laughs> Except he's got a little newsy hat on instead of a a bowler. Okay, I, I'm gonna have a quick panic attack, mm -hmm. um, and then I'm gonna produce flame. Oh my god! You okay? <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm just got well, uh, you know, I guess I could do the smart, just like summon some shears. <laughs> I have I have tool summoning abilities, but yeah, no, like just get rid of the bulk of it real okay. quick, and then I mean I'm gonna try get back to town. I don't know. Okay. I don't want me seem like this. I but I definitely don't want to spend an entire day in nature trying to. Uh... All right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in in the end, we'll say that you um you know you, you essentially reduce yourself uh below below half health uh from from burns and um, I am fire yeah. resistant if that matters oh, I, at all. I know, I know. Okay. That's okay. yeah. But um in the end, you think that you have burned away all of the hair. The question is, did you go all the way? Did you get rid of your like eyebrows, your hair no, on your head? Are you starting no. fresh? No. He's okay. just trying to, like, you know, uh, controlled burn, as they say in certain construction mm -hmm. companies. Okay. The majority of the damage comes from the uh, the meat and veg uh, section of your of your self grooming. Oof. Yeah. It, you you get a you get a fire started and hair goes up pretty quick, you know. And there was a lot of singeing, a lot of burning, a lot of rolling around and jumping back in the stream. Um, it was a long and embarrassing and painful morning. Uh, when all is said and done, your, uh, your, your bright red, uh, scorched body, uh, you now just have extremely long, um, hair growing out of your face and head. You've managed to clear, clear your body. I have a beard now. That's what I'm hearing. You, you could, yeah. When I say every part, part of skin, yeah. I mean, it's growing from your cheeks, from your nose. Yeah, like, like the you eyelids. Have hair, you have hair growing out of everything. But as I'm getting rid of it, it's not rapidly coming back. Nope, it's not coming back. You're bur you're burning it down to the to the roots. Okay, okay. Well, I'm gonna get back into town, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to, if he could tell, I'm giving angry, accusing looks at Thanlin. I'm sure he can't tell through the hair. Mm -hmm. and well, we don't I... know what's happened to Thanlin yet, so let's let's yeah. leave off with you arriving back at town. I just want to say you all agree to this. I know. All right. I had I could have never prepared for this. All right, so next up would be uh, Raijin. I don't know if we need to know what happened to Raijin. I'm sure he's fine. So, let's see. Um... Oh, all right. No worries, he's fine. Um, he... I guess he'd talk about it if it asked. Layla, let's see. Um... Oh. Okay. Uh, so, you... Um... <laughs> you and Sasha... Uh, you wake up in the woods uh, near near town, uh, the sort of wooded hilllands outside of town. Um, you're both naked, done up with uh, druidic um, body paint and uh, holding tight to homemade spears. The, the tips of the spears seem to be stained with blood. You guys remember nothing of the night before.
Do I recognize the kind of dreadic paint on her? Uh, yes, you have, you've done yourselves up in uh, paint that would symbolize uh, the hunting of a great beast. Huh. <laughs> Sick. This could be a good thing. There is a few moments. You uh, would likely need your Bandon to help you backtrack and recover your gear, but you could try to do it on your own with a uh, survival for tracking. I, I think she would try to re recover her gear and find what beast they hunted. Mm -hmm. Okay, give me a wisdom survival. Sure. It was Sasha's initiation ritual into Druid. <laughs> okay. Um, with that check, you were able to backtrack to um, a hidden cache where you left your uh, all of your equipment, which is good. But at no point were you able to discern what it was you were hunting. Or whose blood is on the spears. Or why you felt like you had to go do the hunting naked. Hmm. There's a lot of questions. Is there any way to determine what kind of creature it is from its blood? Wow. That um, that'd be... I, 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 don't, I don't know. Um, I mean, there's definitely relatively fresh blood drawing on it, but it's of a, of a red variety. So a lot, a lot of species would kind of have similar, similar colored blood. I think, I think she'd scrape some off in a container because she, uh -huh. she's curious and, you know, when she gets sure. back to town, there's a Barnabas and he's really good at that kind of stuff. Okay. Fair enough. All right. <laughs> and she's like, well, I guess you're a druid now. Uh, Sasha uh, creates a beautiful um, necklace of daisies because she now has the druid craft cantrip. Oh shit! Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah, it's pretty much over. It's pretty much over. <laughs> uh, all right, Rayfina, what do you get up to? Um, oh, that's nice. Uh, Rayfina, um, you wake up um, inside the new uh, mobile fort. Um, you are not wearing the clothes that you started with. Instead, uh, you are wearing a suit of leather armor that seems to have been um, hastily and drunkenly uh, crafted last night. It does seem to be made of ox hide. <laughs> I told Barnab you they went last night. <laughs> Barnabas, you gotta need to drop another 15 gold. Uh... <laughs> Okay. Um, during the day, oh, also the uh, the leather armor uh, includes a, a helmet that has like ox horns, so it looks like a really cheesy like cartoon Viking type hat. Uh, you hear rumors that a were ox was uh, spotted last night terrorizing um, some of the some of the townsfolk oh in the out God. outskirts of town. So this is even more hilarious. I think my AC has now gone down even worse than. <laughs> Oh jeez! <laughs> if it's right. now leather armor, oh perfect. You may now you may attempt to backtrack your activities to at least discover where you left your original uh, equipment. Sure, I'll definitely do okay. that. Uh, what is it? Survival? Yes. Okay. Um, you find uh, the half-eaten uh, and skinned remains of an oxen. And uh, tucked underneath the oxen, you find your uh, your other gear. I think Rafia is horrified. Are fur bugs? Are they? What are they? Uh, they're not like vegetarian. I, I think a lot even, of people they? a lot of people play them as vegetarian because of Critical Role, but I I think they're omnivores. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But this is still a grisly sight. Oh yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, if you no, had made, not, if you had made, if you had made good, yeah, it's not a grizzly. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> damn, damn, if you damn, damn, if you had made good equipment out of it, but you made shoddy equipment out of it, so it's yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, that was weird. Okay. Um, uh, jerk Bandon with a seventy-one. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, you wake up in an alley. Um. All your equipment is intact, 
everything seems pretty good. Your slowly recovering uh, nervous system is sending you a message that your left ass cheek uh, is is uh, aching, as if it has been stabbed many oh, times. No. <laughs> uh, oh my God! Yes. All right. Uh, he sits is... up in the alleyway, just kind of rubbing the back of his head. Uh, an, an unpaid Faxpiration question. Who is Jerk Bandit's favorite NPC? Oh, man. Uh, let me think about this for a second. Hmm. Oh, that's what your helmet looks like, Rafina, that you made. <laughs> <Yeah>. Nice. <laughs> um, his favorite NPC? Was she uh -huh. with the group when they fought Karkaland? I can't remember. No, I don't believe so. I think think she was because we, they, we had the Fomorian in that fight and she came with the Fomorian. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so well. yeah. Sorry, continue. Oh, man. All right. So I think it's between the two people he's interacted the most with and that he's seen the most change in. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, right now, his, his favorite person that he's been interacting with on the B team and his favorite NPC has been Raijin. Okay. All right. Because well, he is way beyond what he expected as a person. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Um, I don't know why I asked that anyways. Um, moving on. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Gina's flick trigger. Um, oh. Okay. And then, let's see. Joslyn. Stay safe, kid. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> that does not sound like a stay safe kid. So Ray, <laughs> as you're working, um, you see from the the newly acquired two story um, battle wagon, you see what looks like a corpse, uh, a dirty corpse, uh, just dirt kind of falling from it, clinging to it, uh, get sort of pushed awkwardly out the window, and it falls the. 12, 15 feet, uh, or 15 feet or so to the ground with a thud, and then you see Jocelyn looking out the window in a panic. She locks eyes with you, uh, covered in uh, bloody um, ox skin armor with a viking hat on, and the two of you share uh, a shared look in that moment. What the fuck? Okay. Uh, is this like a dwarven body? It does appear to be a dwarven body, yes. Okay. okay. Uh, a long dead, a long dead dwarven body. At first, you thought it was a zombie. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. I'm just going to cast animate dead and send it on its way. Oh. <laughs> All right. As you do, it kind of gets up, and then you can sense that it needs. To, what is? Where is its way? You are its mistress. Oh man. Um. This this town is is it's uh hold on let me look at the map real quick. Uh, does it seem like there's a bunch of like mountains or something? Yeah, the mountains yeah. all over the place. Okay, yeah. it's just gonna look at one of the peaks of mountains and just point uh, in that direction. <laughs> all right, it nods uh and it just starts shambling off. And Shasta says, "Thank you." Um, I I don't I don't know exactly what. You know what? Shazen, Let's what just happened. Well, we all, all I remember is there was some kind of contest to drink as much Dwarven Fire Whiskey as possible. Do you remember that? I... <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Alright, uh, so then we go to Barnabas with a four. Oh, we already did Barnabas. Oh, Barnes eh? rolled a four. Yeah, yeah, Barnes rolled a four. Okay. And then that's everybody, right? Everyone yeah. carousing? Well, me. Wait, where's Thandlin? I don't see Thandlin. I could have uh... sworn I rolled. Mm, I don't see you on here. I don't see it in chat. I don't know. Oh. Okay. <laughs> he ended up having a nice night's sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The, one, the guy that dragged everybody out to go carousing. All right. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Uh, all right, you wake up in uh, in your bed in the new ba battle wagon, and um, you are wearing a medal 
and the medal says uh, Brew Master. And uh, you feel around, and in your pocket is a certificate. And the certificate says that you apparently won uh, a, a competitive drinking cost, uh, contest, and that uh, you get a free drink every night uh, from the local tavern uh, for the rest of your life. I had a good ass night. Now where is her, now where's everyone out? This God guy. <laughs> God, this guy. <laughs> Gonna just let him have his night. Uh You all had a choice. <laughs> I just don't know how I got left up in that alley. Who abandoned me? I thought I went out with friends. I'm just like disappointed. Look. Beautiful. Look, hey, I got abducted. Why? By who? I'm not sure I want to talk about it as he brushes his flowing locks out of his eyes. Yeah, we don't need to. We don't need to talk about it. And he just adjusts the way he's sitting in the chair. Mm -hmm. Are, are you okay, I... Jerry? Yeah, fine. I think Ray is uh, his consoling. Yeah, Jerry. Jocelyn. It's it's not it's not anything internal, but it just feels like it's like you were stung by like so many insects on your on your left butt cheek. You know what? Excuse me for a moment. And he's gonna go find a restroom in a mirror. Okay. Okay. Uh, is you there, like, see. Some... Yeah, yeah. You see the smiling, uh, the smiling face of Raijin looking back at you from your left butt cheek. <laughs> he's like holding his like fist, like he's flexing his bicep, and it says, uh, "We can do it." Uh, it takes him a minute, mm -hmm. and then Jert smiles, buckles his belt back, and takes a deep breath before he heads back out. Beautiful. All right. Argus so, would then take his place in the bathroom and then, like, summon Shears and get his uh, look back to normal. Okay. I would say as a craftsman, you could craft a nice haircut. Um, wow. All right. Do you um, so you, do, you do a full, like, shave the face, shave the nose, uh, yeah, yeah. Trying, to, trying to save the eyebrows? Is your goal to get back to normal? I mean, you have a lot to yeah, work yeah. with now. This yeah, is your no, opportunity. No. You could have the fullest beard of any halfling ever. <laughs> no, I'm uh, I'm not gonna <laughs> request new artwork just to get a beard. Okay, if, fair uh, enough. I mean, Photoshop exists, my friend. He's a, so. he... <laughs> <laughs> I should get Photoshop. Photoshop. But with how much you smoke, it might be a fire hazard to um, have that much facial hair. I don't know. In my head, it seems a little funnier if it like. So you walked in to go shave, right? Yeah. Okay, so like Jert's like about to like leave the bathroom as you walk in. And he just mm -hmm. stops and stares. What? He steps away from the mirror. Nothing. Nothing. It seems we both had an interesting night. Yeah, fortunately I won't have to remember this for too long. I can just shave this away and it's all back to normal. No long-term consequences. Anyone see Lelio? Well, Sasha. Everyone else is here, right? I will assume then, uh, as you guys prepare for your journey, um, in order to not miss a possible random encounter with the wagon and also to hold on to your magical nat 20, um, you guys are not going to camp fire travel. Uh, you're going to manually travel overland. I think that's going to be the way we do it. Yep. All right. Any any last business in the town of Hundlestone before you head out? There are rumors of a of a a, a local witch who who lives uh, in the, in the hilly, hilly woods outside of town. Oh, is there? Okay, we could take that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> what was she notorious for? Uh, she is she is notorious for um, making potions that have uh, ill side effects, but. Mm those desperate for discount potions and uh, solutions to maladies that they have been unable to find cures for will sometimes seek her out. I don't know about that part, but the discount potions sounds like right up part of this alley. <laughs> honestly, honestly. Like you, like you heard about it at the, at the thing and you were like, yeah, yeah. Nothing. Ooh, clearance <laughs> sale. Yeah. I'm gonna go buy buy out her stock. I bet they're even cheaper after dark. Uh, kind of kind of thing. All right, yep. fair. 
All right, Raijen just tells you that he organized a, a hobo fight, and it was very exciting and profitable. So that's what he got up to. He, uh, uh, Gina does not speak of what happened uh, last night. Uh, oh. Uh, nor, <laughs> uh, nor does um, Jocelyn. Just sorry. three people hard work on their craft, just trying to block out what happened. What, when Layla and Sasha return, um, they both seem to be um, closer and happier than you saw the when they they left to go carousing the night previous. Nice. Whether or not you guys washed off the ceremonial paint or left it on uh, is, is up to you. But I am assuming everybody got dressed again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Leave the paint on. Fits with my fits with my artwork anyway. Now. Fair enough. All right. So. Hmm. Uh, no, 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 I just walk into the RV titty zap. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I mean, so, some druids do that. Some druids do that. Everyone will be completely respectful of that. Um, Ray, uh, you know that, uh, that they got up to some uh, shenanigans, for sure, uh, mm -hmm. of a spicier variety with your very high passive uh, insight. Uh, Ray, you also know that Jocelyn may or may not have robbed a grave last night. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like Ray is more consoling Jocelyn uh, mm -hmm. of of her troubles than anything. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, her her uh, therapy uh, shop is open to anyone who wishes to talk. <laughs> All right, Thanlin. As a side effect of having such a great night, you also gain total confidence. Hell yeah! All right, it all worked out well in the end. <laughs> Every, everyone, everyone just turns and stares at that land. You all had a choice, okay? Mm. Alright. Um, so, with everybody sorted, as it were, um, I will advance uh, I will advance the time. So, let's see. Uh, where did we leave off? Oh, it was evening in the, the previous town. Oh, jeez. Alright, so... You would have stayed the night there. One, two, three, four, five, six a.m. Uh, then you would have traveled to this town, which would have taken all day, and then you slept all night, and then you woke up, and people were in different places. You had to get everybody back together. So we'll assume that you head out of town around 8 a.m. All right. So um, you're going to travel the roads uh, heading towards the crossroads, and it is a journey of about, I think we said, a day and a half. Um, a little more than a day and a half, uh, with your new wagon in tow. Okay. Um, I would need a survival check from one member of Team Nature. And I will roll yeah. for some, some rando encounters real quick. Okay, switch to ninja mode. Go. Mm -hmm. You got this, Jerk. Yeah, so I see him coming. They're about to get now. like forty ballista shots into him. We've had too long rest. So I should only be a minus two on my stuff now. Concern. Oh wow. Okay. Uh, you guys have a completely uneventful day. Uh, you do not get to test out any of your new equipment. I mean, you could shoot at like you know birds and shit if you wanted to, Barnabas, with your uh, with your your new siege weapons, but. Uh, for the most part, it's just a nice day, and it's honestly the most comfortable traveling that you've ever done. Yeah. I'm uh, sorry to bring this up now, but do we have ballista bolts? Um, well, I mean, I would assume you would buy some ballista. I would have. I would have oh. absolutely bought some. Okay. I just, right. I just assume they weren't cheap. Use, uh, use, okay, cars, no, use car salesman. It's like, no, oh, that's the extra option that comes with it. <laughs> right. That's how I they guess get you. actually having time on his hands, it will set up a small room one of the living quarters areas oh my goodness all right um bolts are a little bolts are a little price yeah a little mm. price um i'm gonna set them at five gold a piece Oof. all right i'll probably buy a bunch right. thinking 50 mm -hmm. i mean crafter you could probably make these right yeah okay i'll buy you 20 Okay. And then I'll... That's only 100 gold, and then I'll make the rest. And then materials to craft more. Well, 
fortunately you didn't get into a fight um because i don't i have the i have the stat block for it imported but i would like to uh, really give it some love uh since you guys actually uh what's the trouble of doing this so um i will try to i will try to make a, a cute little map for it um that you guys c can access as a player map essentially um and then uh get it uh get it a miniature to sort of dri drive around with or whatever um not sure how i'm going to handle a miniature for 22 oxen i'll probably just make a swarm i'll probably just do a swarm yeah. of oxen would be the easiest way to handle that we'll give it stats like a swarm and all that um oh that'd be terrifying that. to face down if we just decide to send them at people like, <laughs> a stampede of, of oxen all right so then you settle in that night for some traditional uh giphy camping um so this would be whatever kind of camping you want to do, uh, but you're basically getting to sleep in a nice warm bed with like sheets and linens and yeah, we got a house. All that, room. yeah, it's really really nice. Um, so what um, what kind of camp actions does everybody get up to uh, that night, if any? And then we will proceed into the next day. Oh, oh, this music's making it sound like you got attacked while you're camping. My bad. Um, what, what kind of camping uh, actions would anybody get into, if any? We could run through them super fast. Dalen would just be telling the story of how he earned the brew master. Oh, beautiful. All right. Metal. You're telling the story? Give me a performance. I'm going to say that with Team Nature and your wagon, the DC is a five for your camping activities since you had nothing bad happen all day. Nice weather. All these uh, druids on your team and a mobile home this is a this is the easiest camp you've ever had okay why doesn't every adventuring part oh my god so it's thanlin gives yeah thanlin gives the greatest performance of his career um <laughs> recounting oh, to you the incredible night that he had when you realized that you were going to lose your allies is when they got to uh everybody was doing really well with the drinking contest so well, in fact, the dwarves were uh, declaring you guys cheaters. They started casting Detect Magic to see if you had some sort of uh, magical items that you were using to uh, to make it, you know, to the, the final ends of this uh, this competition. But what they did next is what really turned things uh, on their heads. The, uh, the proprietor of the inn produced from below uh, and behind the counter a bottle of green liquid. They explained to you that it was called Emerald Dream. It was a type of liqueur that was uh, created using the fermented uh, dust of a green dragon's breath weapon. Incredibly expensive and prone to cause hallucinations. And that's when that's when shit got real crazy. Um, you don't remember much after that, Thanlin, but you do remember one by one your companions uh, losing vomiting violently or simply just angrily storming out of the tavern uh at the end of it all it came down to you and raijin staring each other down and uh in the end uh it was more than raijin himself could take and he vomited out so many things it was like watching a shark uh throw up just you know not license plates or anything but but pretty much just all the sorts of garbage and junk that he had eaten during the day um, just a huge mess, and then he excused himself, stumbling out into the night, and you were awarded uh, your great honor. Mm. Beautiful. But I do think that that means by critically succeeding, did you just immediately get rid of your total confidence? Absolutely. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right. You know what? It made sense. You may give any person you want inspiration, whoever you feel would have been the most inspired by your incredible story. Hmm. Layla? Okay. I know she's been feeling pretty down, so... Alright, Layla, you uh, you gain a point of inspiration uh, because of Thanlin's incredible story. Alright, um, Barnabas, you doing crafting? Yeah, I uh, take the corpse flower tentacle we got in the Thorn uh -huh. Waste, make it into a quarter staff, make it into a masterwork, give it to Rafina. Oh, just nice. A, just like a nice little gift. And uh, with my last crafting thing, I just make some incendiary shells. Beautiful. Okay, Rafina, what camping activity do you get up to? Um, I would like to say that they were working on making more potions. 
um, mm -hmm. healing potions, and okay. she has two abilities, and I'm not sure how that, that would factor into it. Um, let's see. Forest of Jungle to fill the natural minutes. Again, expertise die. Using herbalism and kitten checks to locate herbal ingredients. In addition, whenever you uh, obtain a medicinal or rare herb using the herbalism kit, you gain twice as many. And then no matter the brush, you always know how to harvest nature's bounty. You have advantage on checks made to locate or harvest edible flora and fauna, and you gain twice as much as normal. Uh, one of them sounds like it's mostly focused on food. One of them is focused on crafting. So are you looking for crafting supplies, essentially? Yeah, crafting supplies. Okay. So I, see, oh. I think it sounds like it's the first one that does that. Okay. Alright. And yeah, just making additional basic healing potions. Or just getting the supplies to get ready to make those later. Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, you find a, a large um, amount of adder's tongue uh, growing near the road. Uh, you actually kind of like, I guess maybe you're like hanging out on the roof of the wagon, kind of scanning the horizon, see if there's anything useful. And you almost fall off the top of the wagon when you see this off in the distance. Um, you can create from this a, a draught that when you drink of it, it is going to give you plus one to all healing that you get for uh, essentially 24 hours uh, until, you, until you long rest. So, um, when somebody drinks uh, of this distilled uh, substance, uh, basically you boil it down um, into an oil, and then uh, this infusion uh, can be used to enhance uh, the healing rate of others. Cool. And how many of these? Uh, well, this is just the raw ingredient. I still have to craft mm -hmm. to make it. How many of these did I grab? Uh, you found uh, enough to make 12 of these um, oils. Ooh. Okay. And it's a single uh, a single check to make, uh, but it is a DC 15. Okay. But that would have to be for another long rest activity to try that. Uh, correct, yep. Okay. And these are called Adder... Tongues? Adder's tongue, yep. Which is a real plant in real life, um, uh, actually. Okay. It, yeah, cool. Okay. Um, all right then. Let's see. Do 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 do. Radar is. Are they still with us? Maybe. No. Oh. Danlin's gone. Uh, Ray's gone. Barnabas is gone. Layla, what uh camping activity do you get up? To before we kind of set um, that. Um, Layla would like to craft as well. She'd like to try to craft some poison that gives the poison condition. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do you know of such a poison like OOC? Do you know of such a poison offhand? OOC? No. Okay. Uh. Okay. Then I will have to get back to you on that. Uh, it sounds like the, the straight up potion of poison is what you're trying to make, um, because that causes poison damage and, uh, causes the poison status. But if you're that just trying to, one, yeah, if you're just trying to cause one that causes poison, you'd probably be able to make that easier and cheaper than the actual potion of poison. Um, so I'll try to get you, um, information on that before next session. Okay. All right, and then Jert, I guess finish this up. Um, I think Jert's just gonna relax in solitude and keep watch on the new walls, kind of get a handle for uh, the perimeter of our new place to stay, what it looks like to look out over the edge of it. All right, uh, nice. But he's mostly yeah, he's keeping watch and relaxing to himself. Uh, he's had quite the uh, tumultuous past few days, and then just having that that night to uh, be with everyone, and now a night to himself is kind of like. Put a whole cap on that before they get into the next chapter for him. Beautiful. All right, go ahead and give me a um, what is it, just a wisdom check, right? Okay, raw wisdom. I believe so. Here we go. DC five. 
Hey, we made it. Hey, there you go. All right, so you gain, a, you gain an inspiration, and despite all the struggles, all the turmoil, all the death, dying, and ra raising from the dead, not to mention carousing, um, yeah, you uh, you watch the sun set uh, over the mountains you just came from, and think about what is to come. All right, cool. Ah, and that's where we'll end the session. So, um, next week, we do have game. Um, the week after that, we are taking a break. I know I had tried hard to set a uh, an end date for the game. Um, that is because I, I firmly believe that when, you know, you advertise a game and you sign up for a game, uh, generally, you don't want to keep people longer than uh, you say you're going to, right? Like, everyone has lives and things that they want to do and things they want to schedule around. Um, that being said, uh, there's still a lot of story to tell, so, um, I don't know how everyone's schedules are looking and what plans you are making. I will make sure that I honor the original date that I said the campaign would end, which is May 27th. Um, I don't think we need more time than that. Um, but if we do, uh, maybe closer to the date, it, we could discuss it. But I think now you, you guys should still be okay. You guys should be okay. All right. Um, tomorrow we've got Curse of Strahd Daybreak in the morning, Mythic in the evening. We've got level 20 plus uh, stuff going on Monday nights with Odyssey Prime. Um, Tuesday we got Abomination Vault and uh, also Cyberpunk Red. Wednesday, um, playing some Cult of the Lamb. Might actually beat it Wednesday night. Maybe I'm being overly optimistic. I don't know. I think I I think I'm poised to beat it. Uh, we'll see. Um, if I do beat it, I'm gonna be looking for another game to play, and um, I'm gonna just be grabbing stuff out of my backlog uh, of recommended games, essentially, and seeing if there's general opinion on what would make for a good stream game uh, versus just a game to play. Um, and then Thursday we got Curse of Strahd Nightfall uh, continuing. Friday will be vodcasting at 11 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, uh, and we'll be spoiling everything about the Dungeons & Dragons movie. So by that point, Dom and I will have both seen it, and anyone that doesn't mind it being spoiled or has seen it and wants to gush about it for like an hour live on stream, we're going to just talk about the movie and what we liked, what we didn't like, and people in chat can like bring stuff up, and we'll, you know, we're just going to, it's an open discourse of huge spoilers for the movie. Um, and then Saturday morning, we'll be back here. So anybody else have announcements before we adjourn? Okay, great. Well, I hope you guys enjoy your Saturday. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it's nice sometimes, uh, even in a combat heavy game like this one, to have a session of uh, rest and role play and uh, decision making. So uh, thank you for not making me do a whole bunch of fantasy shopping where all your dreams come true. Got a deal for you. I uh, appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys around the Discord. I I'll echo that because the Thorn Waste was, was kind of rough. So kind of need yeah, this a, little, is really nice. a little decompress afterwards. That's totally. yeah. why I did a carousing. It's a little <laughs> self-care. It was, it was a good the, call. Says the guy that had nothing negative happen. To I, <laughs> I have no regrets. <laughs> Look, all right. I'll say it again. You all had a choice. Uh, <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Fair it was enough. an excellent time. I hate see you that all you're right. <laughs> all right. Yeah. See you next week. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks, Red. And thanks for everyone tuning in. Catch you next time. A fun session. <laughs>